Okay, I think we should be live in theory. So we're gonna be doing an overclocking kind of walkthrough today. Uh, this is something where the 3600T XT just came out and I said it was one of the best CPUs we've received from uh, Intel or AMD just in terms of review sample quality. Normally review sample quality is all over the place. We often get stuff that's not, uh, not amazing for initial samples. So this one's good. I wanted to walk through some of the process of overclocking an AMD Ryzen CPU. So some qualifications and qualifiers here. Uh, the intent of this content is to provide a, a more normal look at overclocking rather than the extreme liquid nitrogen stuff we normally do. So if you kind of watch the LN2 stuff and not really that into it because it's not something you do, that's fine. This one's going to target more of what everybody can work on. Uh, and I do have a crazy system set up, but I'll talk about that in a moment. It's not, it's not too crazy. It's just a little over the top, but, uh, but the process is the same. So yes, the, I guess first let me know in chat if you can see and hear me okay. This is obviously a, a live video for anyone who's catching the archive later. This is not an upload, so you'll hear some interaction with chat while we're going. And uh, once I get confirmation that they can see and hear everything all right, I'll walk through more of it. But yeah, the objective here is uh, I'm gonna show you my process for when we get a CPU in to review, what do we do kind of behind the scenes to, to just sort of start ramping up, try and overclock, get it ready for the review. So that's gonna include uh, how we set a multiplier for all core, how we set voltages, V-core, uh, then how we work V-core down to the lowest stable V-core for that multiplier. And then after that, I'll walk through some Infinity Fabric overclocking and the, the process for how I determine what's stable there, and then we'll look at memory last, uh, hopefully, if we, if we have enough time. So the reasoning for laying it out this way, and I hope if someone has time, maybe they can timestamp it in the comments below in the archive, but the reason I'm walking through it this way is because with AMD processors, they can get kind of complicated to overclock, so you have, uh, looks like everything's good here in the chat, so you have, um, you know, multiplier, obviously, you can do per core, you can do per CCX, stuff like that. That's enough work as is for a lot of people who haven't really gotten into it before. And then after that, you run it to Infinity Fabric. And if you start kind of trying to do everything, what's going to happen is it'll be unstable and you're never going to know why. And so the, the goal, as with any point of troubleshooting, is to do one thing at a time so that you can iterate and figure out easily what's stable, what's unstable. So that's the objective today. Now, the qualifier. I mentioned is that I'm not the best overclocker. I, I think I'm pretty good relative to the audience in general. Um, but if you look at someone like you know, Bill Zoid, Roman, uh, Bearded Hardware, so Joe, those guys are, are really the top overclockers. But um, I'm, I'm pretty good at it these days overall. So uh, there's a lot of weak points I have, like memory, multi uh, memory tuning, timing tuning is one of my weaker points. Uh, memory overclocking in general is one of my weaker points, but we're good enough here to show you some basics. And then if you really want to get into it, hardware numbers is another good one. Those would be the four channels I would look at. So Der Bauer, actually hardcore overclocking is Buildzoid, uh, Bearded Hardware for Roman, for Joe I mean, <laughs> and then Der Bauer for Roman. And uh, same thing. <laughs> They act the same, they have the same attitude. So those would be the places I would go after this if you want some really detailed extreme stuff, but uh, I'll, I'll give you the intro, the intermediate level stuff. Okay, uh, so let's see. It looks like chat's good. Bearded Hardware, is he still around? Yes, so he, this is public, he's tweeted about it, but he just had a, a kid, I mean, not literally him. I guess technically he, he, he and his fiance had a kid, but uh, so he's not posting right now. I'm sure he'll be back soon, but that's why he's on a hiatus right now. Um, better overclocker than dot, 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 J, question mark, someone says. Uh, probably. Let's get into the, let's get into the stuff. All right, so system setups over here. I don't know if we, we might want to turn the light or something, depending on how, how the lighting is, Andrew, but. Um, I'll walk through the system as we kind of get into this and as chat fills in. We are going to be using a 3600 XT. And that's the new AMD CPU, obviously. Um, for memory, I've got some Trident Z Royal 4000 
kit in here, but we're not going to run it at 4,000. We're going to step it down and walk through that later. For the uh, cooling solution, if you can call it that, that I have mounted, it is what Alpha Cool is calling a 1260 millimeter radiator. So it's three somethings. I don't know, what is this? Are these 140s? These are 140s. So it's three 140s per row. And there's three rows, so you can fit nine 140 fans. And uh, they've basically, I don't know if they've welded them or what the exact process is, but they've stuck them together. They've glued, they've glued three large radiators together to make one bigger radiator. So that is a 1260. Uh, we have four 200 mil fans on it. I do technically have three 140s on the back, but they're not connected right now. So they're actually just going to serve to block airflow, but that's okay for today. For the uh, reservoirs, I have two reservoirs. This is a pump res combo. And then the other one is just a res, just a large res. So let me get on the other side here. This is large reservoir, pump res. And uh, down here is a dual pump. This is an EK dual pump. So we actually have three pumps in this loop. I, it's probably completely unnecessary, almost certainly, because I've run more complicated loops than this with two. But uh, it's built with some expansion in mind. These are QDCs. So quick disconnects are really helpful for quick setups like this, but they do impede flow sometimes a lot. And with the amount of these that I have in the loop, that's why I wanted so many pumps, because it's just there's so many of them, it's going to impede the flow a lot. Plus, we have some really long tubing runs like this one over here, where it starts on the out of this pump, and then uh, it comes back in all the way over here. So that's a pretty long run, which is why I'm running that many pumps. Um, this side, there is a fill port back here on the 1260 rad. So we've got that closed off. And then we have in and outs here, and uh, these feed only into the CPU. Now. In terms of talking about this being a uh, kind of like more basic overclock, even though this looks crazy, I didn't get any further than I got with a 280 millimeter liquid cooler because Ryzen's just, well, any CPU, you, you kind of start looking at like an exponential curve with voltage where once you hit a certain point, like say 1.4 volts, the requirement to get another 100 megahertz is like that. And this from a 280 wasn't enough to get me over the thermal. Uh, threshold that we were running into where we're starting to run into thermal issues with T-Dye. So this doesn't actually get me any further than a 280 mil CLC does, which is, is the point of saying this is still a basic overclocking walkthrough, even with all of this. It just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, water, chilled water, something else. Just water, just distilled, straight distilled water, nothing in it. Uh, 2080 Ti for the GPU, and uh, we're not really going to be using it, but just in case we, we do some stuff with it, it's in there. Let me, looks like people are filling in. Let me just tweet this out and say, we are live. Overclocking walk through on the R5 3600 XT, including Infinity Fabric and memory. Um, Andrew, can you see the display in front of you or does it need to be refreshed? I can see it. Oh, it's playing? Okay, cool. All right. So for this stream, I will be taking uh, super chats. It might be a 30 to 60 minute delay, depending on how things go. But I will be reading all the super chats. And we also just listed a brand new shirt, which is the one uh, that I am wearing. And that's the PC component shirt, which you can find on store.gamersnexus.net. So if you wanted to pick one up, it's on the store. It's got a bunch of uh, let me try to not talk straight into the mic, but it's got a bunch of small components in it like VRMs, uh, MOSFETs, video cards, motherboards, stuff like that. And on the back, which you're not going to see because of my hair, but on the back there's a Gamers Nexus logo with some stuff on it. So that's linked in the description. It's on store.gamersnexus.net. Will this apply to the 3700? Yes. Same, same approach. Uh, no LN2 overclock. And we'll get to that, not today, but we will do one of those with the, with the new XC CPUs. I need to figure out if I want to do 3900 XC or 36 or what. Nice looking shirt, says uh, Jerky McNaughty. Well, thank you for the compliment on the shirt. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I think we can get started here. Let me boot this up. I'm going to disconnect the OS drive so that we can go straight into BIOS without needing to slam delete. Let's just start spewing water everywhere right now. This radiator is 
It's got, Andrew commented earlier that it's got a, a water feature sound to it, like those fancy waterfalls you might buy for your, for your house or something. You can hear the water trickle sometimes. It's a very large radiator with a lot of uh, channels in it. Okay, how does this look on, is one of those not spinning? Yeah, I'll fix that in a minute. It's spinning now. Oh, is it? Okay, cool. Uh, first time I've ever caught a live GN watching on my 10700K at 5.3. 10 10.3 to even, even better. 5.3 is pretty good. Uh, hello Steve, says Naomi, and finally got my mouse pad from you guys shipped to Germany. It's just epic with its blue framing. Thank you. We worked really hard on that. That's this, this one right here that uh, Naomi's talking about. This is the wireframe mouse mat, which is on the store. It's a larger mat, so it's kind of like desk width. And... Uh, dimensions are on the store if you're curious, but those are on back order right now, and we still expect to to get those in probably August. We're about two weeks ahead of schedule on them right now. We'll, hopefully that holds up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now, what you're seeing is uh, I've reset the memory tune already, but I guess let me know how the screen looks. Um, do I need to tilt at all? Oh, that's better. No, no, not really. I guess tilting up would be better. Up, like this way. Uh, opposite. Glare's gone there. That's as far up as it can go. That's not bad. Okay, so uh, 4.6 is what I had in there for the review. This voltage is a little bit on the high side. I was trying some other stuff. But let's just clear everything and start over from scratch. We're gonna do one baseline run, really simple stuff, and immediately move on to overclocking it. Uh, this is going to be a quote unquote normal overclock this time, not extreme, so won't be any chicken clocking involved. We're just gonna go through the actual process I use uh, for a basic overclock for AMD Ryzen stuff. So it is fully reset now. This is a 3600 XT. Uh, people like the monitor. So this monitor, we had to label the front of it because everyone always asks what it is. This is a Gigabyte AD27QD. Labeled the front because people always want to know what it is in the streams. Okay. So, yeah, the uh, 30... Must be a car tuning stream. That radiator is huge. Yeah, it's bigger than a lot of uh, car radiators, I think. All right, cool. Um, so what we're going to do for baseline is run some really basic stuff. Uh, there's a couple important things I need to point out. One of them is a lot of people will run like Cinebench and um, they will uh, uh, kind of run Cinebench to validate a clock, but then claim that that's stable. Cinebench stable is not like stable, stable. It's not really stable. And I would only use this for initial testing of overclocks. I wouldn't use it to validate once I think I'm good. So this is what I'd use to figure it out, and then I would use another application. Prime 95 26.6 is a non-AVX one you could use. You could use newer Prime 95 for AVX. You could use Blender, which is what we do. But anyway, let's do a baseline score. I don't know if R20 might be kind of slow for this, but we'll see if it's... It should be quick enough, I guess. So we're going to do baseline, full auto everything, including the memory right now. And then I'm going to go turn XMP on, and we'll work our way up from that. Will that rad fit in my Civic? I don't know. <laughs> People are asking about chicken clocking. That is a, I think the first time I heard that phrase was from Tin, uh, when he was at EVGA, <laughs> chicken clocking. OK, let me check some super chats while we get this number in. Your activity. Uh, okay, first one is $5 Canadian. Thank you very much. From Amber Oakhart, who says, we see and hear you. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you do, because otherwise that would have been a long intro with, like, no audio. Uh, your OC vids help me overclock my 3900X and ramp. Well, that's good. Hopefully this helps even more, because I want to go through a little bit more of it here. Uh, I've learned a lot in the last couple months on this stuff. Some of the stuff I'm going to type in today, I'm not necessarily recommending it 24-7, you know, 
uh, without degradation or anything, depending on the voltages we get into. But okay, so 3851, we're just going to write that down. There is variance run to run with Cinebench. It is definitely not a perfect benchmark. Uh, and you should run it a few times to really tell, but we're just going to leave it here because, the, I mean, the point of the stream is not to produce a review, it's just to do some, some basic numbers. Now, the next thing I want to use today is we're going to use Cinebench for verifying specifically the all-core overclocks to make sure they at least run. And then the, the other really important thing with, uh, with overclocking is verifying your numbers to make sure they're actually improving. Because sometimes you'll have things where we've got Prime in here too, you can see. Sometimes you'll have instances where uh, with GPUs especially, but sometimes with there's some we've reported on with CPUs where the overclock will look like it's going higher, but the scores are actually going down. Last time that happened with AMD was when we showed off undervolting problems where people would undervolt the hell out of their processor, think that it's awesome, it's so stable, such a low voltage. But then actually they were losing points. And so that's why you always need to verify with score between overclocks, which is what I'm doing here today. Second application we're using is TimeSpy, uh, part of the 3D Mark suite, which is now by Underwriter Laboratories. And instead of using the full suite or graphics, I'm going to do just the CPU test. We're going to run it twice and log those numbers. The reason I'm using this one, in addition to Cinebench, is I want something that's kind of similar to a game. It's not, it's a little, it's definitely more intensive, uh, especially the CPU test, but it's not, uh, doesn't stress the CPU the same way as Cinebench. So Cinebench has basically no value for, uh, for memory overclocking. You're not going to really see any difference there. Whereas TimeSpy, as we tune the memory, when we get through the stream a bit, you're going to see the improvements in TimeSpy from memory directly. And that'll scale to a lot of games almost one-to-one -one percentage wise. So this is a benchmark where uh, it's doing a physics simulation. It's pretty repeatable. There's a bit of variance, but it's not as bad as, as other applications. And most of the time it'll crash out if it's not stable. Sometimes it survives and you'll find in a real game that it crashes out. But for the most part, it'll, it'll crash you out before a game would. Can we get hardware info, voltages, and temps? We can after I get the baseline numbers. That'll influence the numbers, which I guess is another thing I should mention. Uh, hardware info is a great application for monitoring. I would strongly recommend it. But uh, either run it for all of your verification runs or don't run it for all your verification runs. If you mix and match, you're going to wonder why the score drops sometimes, because it, it will impact the performance, especially Cinebench. OK, so let me just make a quick spreadsheet for myself in Notepad. Uh, so this is going to be CBR20. And then this is going to be TSE score and then TSE FPS, OK? So TSE score was 7,100 points. It's been a while since we've used this one. I oh, miss it. It's a good one. Uh, and then 23.86 for the FPS. So there's our baseline. I'm going to boot back into BIOS and get some of the super chats. Uh, next one, VC Jester, good to see you in chat, sent $2 and says, Steve Burke body pillows when? Uh, never is the answer to, to that one. Ask Linus, he'd probably do it. Ask him when you'll get a Linus body pillow. Uh, <laughs> Blendinator with a, a Blender avatar for his name, or her name. Uh, Blendinator sent $5 and said, beer, exclamation point, with a beer emoji. <laughs> Straightforward, I'll give you that. Uh, Nori said, 299 says, shout out to the mods on GN Discord, like Gamer Taboo. Uh, let's do, oh, we're in, I need to talk through this too. So yeah, if you are, I'll get back to the rest of these in a minute. If you are um, really, truly new to all this stuff, then the BIOS you get into is going to be, uh, I'm going to talk through some of this today. I know a lot of you have experience with our channel, but I'm going to talk through some of it with some extra explainers in case we get people who find the archive later and want to learn. Um, so it'll have some more basic terminology in it, and, and I, I apologize if you already know it. So this is the easy mode BIOS. Normally it's F7 to get into hard mode, but apparently that's not true here. It's F2 this time. So we're going to go into the more advanced BIOS, Couple of basic settings that I tune. Uh, so you've got CPU ratio mode. Uh, we're just going to leave that all core. You can do per CCX if you want to get a little more advanced and maybe you have like a 3900X and you want to try and push one set higher than the other. Ratio is going to be what we'll type in to get the, the all core multiplier up. So right now, I mean, this is just BIOS, but it's 3800 megahertz. 
And depending on the application, how many cores it's loading, that'll fluctuate. So you might go up to like 4,400. You could hit 46 sometimes, stuff like that. This one, I think, does 4,700 megahertz on one core loads. And, uh, and that's why you'll get score regression sometimes in single thread applications on Ryzen specifically. So you might see your score go down in single thread applications, single core, uh, if your all core is lower. So to enable XMP, it's the absolute easiest thing you can do. This memory is not going to run at all at, uh, at 40 without me changing a bunch of stuff. So I want to set it to 32. We're going to let, so that's 3200 megahertz, way below what we're going to end up with. We're going to end up with 38. And we're going to start there. We'll let memory do full auto everything. Just let it figure out what it wants. Uh, V-core, all that stuff, we're going to leave alone for right now. DRAM voltage, I want it to be at 1.35, which is what it should be for XMP, but it didn't auto set in this BIOS. I'm, this is not necessary for everybody, but I'm going to set um, the fans to all max speed just to make it easier, because we're running 200 mils anyways. They're going to be quiet. And then CPU, VRM settings. Uh, so load line calibration, the way I used to do it is not really the best way I've learned over time. Um, I used to just set this to max where you get kind of a chart here. This shows the voltage and once you hit a load, uh, go from idle to load, your voltage will typically drop. So with auto, I, I, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but I think auto, we typically see it fall from like I don't know, maybe 1.4, you'll go to like 1.3 one, one or 1.3 something. So this will, uh, will sort of fix the voltage in place if you run it at the highest setting. It might even spike up a little bit when it's under load. But what I've learned more recently, especially with talking to Buildzoid, is that sometimes running a, a lower load line will actually be more stable than running a higher one. I guess it has to do with the VRM trying to keep up with the voltage that it's being asked to provide. Um, and I'm sure he's got some content talking about that. But we're going to go with turbo for now. I think probably high is where you want to be, ideally. But I, I also did all my tuning with this one. So we're going to go with that. Uh, V-Core protection, we're just going to max out. So I, I don't want any protections on this. We just want it to, to do what we tell it to do. And same for current protection. This stuff, you might want to leave it on somewhat if you're not really, because this will like protect you if you actually type in a wrong value. Like if you type in one point, five v core or something uh and you've got all the protections on uh, depending on the bios you might have a little bit more of a layer of protection there for accidents but we're just gonna not type in the wrong number hopefully okay advanced cpu settings i am going to disable cool and quiet uh, i'm going to disable c states we don't want any power states we don't want any power saving functionality right now and i think we can probably ignore the rest of these Spread spectrum, we're going to disable. Uh, in my experience, it helps with stability. I don't know the exact reasoning for it. And then you're going to find that's true for a lot of these settings. And the overclock, we're going to leave alone for now. So it should be a, a one to one IF under auto with 3200 for memory. Let's run that. All we've changed is the memory at this point. OK, I'm just checking chat. Uh, does high RAM speed help with OC? It doesn't help with, I guess it depends on how I interpret that question. Uh, if you buy a higher speed kit of memory, like out of the box, say you buy 4,000 and you're trying to reach um, a one-to-one -one with IF, so you may end up coming down, then yeah, it'll be easier but it doesn't help with like the core overclocking. It will help with the final scoring with FPS and games. There's a pretty big impact, like 10%, 11% sometimes. What's the benefit to BIOS versus Ryzen Master, asks Christian Torres. So I, BIOS is just the older way to do it. Um, there's a lot more options in BIOS. I like working with it more because I can see everything. Ryzen Master, you don't have nearly as many options presented to you. It has to restart for a lot of things like toggling SMT. At that point, you might as well just be in BIOS anyway. Uh, I've also just found it to, to be pretty limited. So like this isn't relevant today, but for extreme stuff, it's limited to 1.55 vCore. You should not go that high unless you're doing LN2 stuff, but um, that can be annoying where I, I might want to be like 1.7 for liquid nitrogen overclocking. So there's some limitations to it. It's fine though. Like if you want to just, I, I actually do use it 
for, you'll see it in streams, I use it for rapid checking of, uh, of frequencies, and then I'll go in BIOS later and apply the final one. Also for extreme overclocking, Ryzen Master, uh, or whatever, some software, it doesn't matter what, um, it's sometimes easier to, to not apply an overclock or much of one in BIOS and then apply it in Windows. It's just, it, it'll be a bit more stable that way. Okay, let me check on Super Chats. Like I said, we've got the new shirts up. I'm gonna try and shout out a few of the orders as they, uh, they come in today. But that's the new PC component shirt we have on store.cameraznexus.net. And it's got a bunch of hidden components in there. So we actually, this idea was because a lot of people really wanted to see the uh, Australia shirt design we did for the charity shirt we did for wildlife. They wanted to see that kind of idea applied to GN logo, you know, always on the store type of items. So that's what we did. Okay. Uh, Daniel Silva, 20 bucks. Thank you very much. That is a lot. Uh, Daniel says, looking forward to learning today. Love your content. My thanks to you and your awesome team. Well, I mean, thanks for the the support and for watching it. Hopefully, hopefully I share something useful for you today. We're definitely going for a bit more of an educational walkthrough today. Um, like I said at the very beginning of this, you know, the preface is, I'm I definitely don't regard myself as an expert overclocker uh, compared to people like like Roman. Bill Zoid, you're always hyper aware of your abilities, so I would put myself more in amateur class. But uh, I know enough to get us started and know enough to do some liquid nitrogen stuff. So, all right, so where was our first one? Is that higher or lower? It should be really about the same, it is. 3848, so our first score was 3851. Uh, anyone not too experienced with this, if, if you run into this, you see 3848 versus 3851 originally, don't be discouraged. Uh, that doesn't mean there's score degradation, it means there's no change. There's, there's variance here. So, and that's expected, that is the intended result here. All we've changed is memory to 3200. We even have auto timings. I have no idea what they are. They might be garbage. Could be worse than they were before. Um, and the point of logging this was just uh, just to see what happens if there's any change or not. But the one that should matter more is going to be 3D Mark here. Uh, like I said, timings are auto. I don't know if they're going to be better or worse, but we'll tune them manually and improve them after this run. I have sh you can check all this stuff in. Uh, Hardware info, but IF should be one to one right now. Okay, we're gonna run that CPU only. Okay, let's see. While that's running, I'll check a store order. Oh, nice! Actually, a lot of orders already. Thank you for picking up the new shirts. So on store.cameraznexus.net, we had John from uh, North Carolina actually pick up a. PC component shirt. Thank you, John. We had uh, David from Utah pick up a Metro chipset station poster. So, uh, yeah, those are still in the store. I don't think there's too many left. I think it might be like 100 posters or something left. But the X570 chipset Metro posters are still up on the store as well. And they bought the, uh, the video card component poster. Johan from Sweden purchased a uh, wireframe mouse mat. Thank you very much. Let me read one more. And then Lucas from New York picked up the new PC component shirt as well. Thank you, Lucas. Okay, so uh, scoring this just finished the run. It is improved, 73.84, and the frame rate is 24.81. I need to go through this too. So in TimeSpy, the difference between 24.81 and 20. 3.86, our previous score. That difference, uh, you know, in a real gaming scenario is just, it's irrelevant. It's not like you're gonna see it. It still sucks, <laughs> like, it's not really consequential. In TimeSpy though, this is a synthetic application built for this stuff, uh, especially the tens. Every decimal point matters. The, I mean, once you get to the, the second decimal point, it's not, it's, that starts to be variance, but when you're in the in tenths, it, it is actually normally significant. So you go like 24.81, just say, let's say um, 24.1, I would call it pretty significant degradation, something's wrong, as opposed to variance. So this is actually, despite being a number that's not, you know, impressive or much of a change, it is actually pretty relevant. So that's just from doing the memory to 32. And uh, we're going to restart back into BIOS and start doing some more serious stuff now, now that we've got a baseline. 
Let's see, OC stream 3600 XT. <clears throat> Would you mind uh, grabbing me a glass of water so that my voice doesn't die in a minute? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so I have my, I can feel feel my my voice. Uh, too much, too many videos lately with all the reviews. So we're gonna do some, some clock ratio stuff now and get into the actual core overclocking. We'll start there. What I like to do is uh, I like to start with all core and I set a high voltage. Not, not crazy, but higher than I'd like it to run for 24 seven. And then I start to bring it down as we determine the stability of the max core. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> What's chat saying? Will you be changing your advanced settings or showing them again? Uh, yeah, I can show them again. <clears throat> Hopefully this is helpful. I don't, we don't normally do stuff like this. Um, Mark says, would you recommend using the mod mat as a desk pad or is it not very soft for that? It's definitely not soft. The mod mat is intentionally gritty. It kind of like grabs that thing so when you drop screws and whatever it'll grab at it a little bit and uh it's not like a hand comes out of it and grabs the screw that would be weird although very cool and probably marketable but uh <laughs> it's got a grip to it so this is intentionally grippy i mean i'm using a mouse on it and it's fine but for gaming purposes uh, we don't really recommend the mouse mat as a gaming mouse pad because it's not smooth at all we do have the mouse mats on the store for that um, the mod mats are meant to be like a, a really rough, ruggedized working surface for building stuff. It's good on a workbench. You could use it though. It's just not something I marketed as. Um, okay, so here's how I, I go through the basics. Once I apply my initial advanced CPU settings, which is gonna be uh, disabling cool and quiet, disabling C states, anything that's like power regulation, I don't want it. I don't want any power efficiency stuff right now. You might wanna turn that stuff on later, but if you're leaving the computer on like all day, all night, you probably, you probably should do that. But uh, I've set my LLC and we do have a video from Buildzoid on our channel, I think about load line calibration. If you look up, I think how load line calibration works, Gamers Nexus, it'll pop up. Um, so you can learn about that. And I've set, I've, I've mostly disabled my protections. So now uh, what I do is I'm gonna start with, you know, we've got 38 here now as all core. Uh, so just from experience, I, this, I'm pretending like I haven't really overclocked this chip before. From experience, I know a 3600 should always do 43 for the most part. Uh, it should probably do 44. So let's start there and then we'll go up to 45 and 46. That's how I would do it. So what I would typically do is I start at like 1.4 for vCore. This is not where I want to be at the end of it. Uh, some people are of the opinion that this for 24 seven use could cause degradation on newer Ryzen silicon. I don't really know about that. I, I mean, that's, that's hard to really gauge uh, from my position at least. So the point is to see if it's stable. And then what I'm gonna do is try and bring it, my goal is to bring it down towards 1.3 is where I'd like to be for this. But we're gonna start high, that way we don't deal with a lot of crashing right away just cause that's kind of discouraging and annoying. Um, that's all I'm gonna change here right now, other than the stuff I showed a moment ago. So we're just going 44, and then uh, 1.4, and then I'm gonna bring the multiplier up, and I'm gonna bring the multiplier as high as I can at 1.4, and once we hit the point where it starts crashing, uh, I need to make a decision, do I wanna push the voltage more? Do I feel comfortable with that? If it's 24 seven use, probably not. If it's like a one-off competitive thing, then sure, we could try it. Uh, and otherwise, once you hit that point, the next step is to bring the voltage down. So you, I like to push the frequency up first with a high voltage, and then once I find that trip point, I bring the voltage down and try to find the most stable. And sometimes you might have to bring the frequency down 50 or 100 megahertz in order to get to a, a voltage you feel more comfortable with. Um, so, all right, let's run R20 again. And this, uh, I think, should improve. Ryzen's a little tricky depending on how many cores are active, but this one's all of them. Uh, let's see, love your videos. Despite always watching very late in the UK, it is pretty late there. Uh, can you do a similar one on overclocking a 10600K? We definitely can. I, I feel good enough about that 
processor now that I, I think I could provide a decent enough guide on it. So um, yeah, we could do that. I'd like to do a stream on that anyway. What CPU is this? It is a 3600 XT. I hope I have it linked in the description. Yeah, I have uh, all the parts on the bench in the description. Just because they're in use on this bench doesn't mean I recommend building this computer. Uh, it is not what you would call practical because this is the cooling solution. So you know, this is like a, a micro ATX case panel in width, which I guess would be a cool mod project. But uh, and then we have four 200 mil fans, got a couple pumps and reservoirs. This is not actually that crazy. I was I was kind of disappointed in the cooling performance compared to like a liquid freezer too. Um, so I, I think it comes down to the water block. I would like to try some other water blocks, but uh, it's just I can't get the heat out of the CPU fast enough. It's it's not efficient despite all of the show. So um, and I tried different fans and everything. So I'm thinking uh, needs to be lapped or delitted or something. Better better. Uh, heat sink, 3977 points. So, uh, let's, has he done F clock yet? No, we're do, doing that next after I establish the process for this. So 4.4 and 1.4, like I said, we're starting high on voltage and low on the frequency and working up. This is the exact way I walk through it. Uh, now we need to run time spy, get the scores there. So I just like to collect the scores as I go and then compare them all to make sure, like I said earlier, you're really just trying to make sure you're not losing points because if you set settings that aren't stable, you could have, could have like silent uh, memory errors in the background or something. And I'll show an application to test memory in a, in a little bit once we get closer to that. Um, I like to use Memtest Pro. It's really good. It's, I paid five bucks for it. Didn't really know anything about it other than Buildzoid said use this thing. Okay, so um, let me get some super chats. <laughs> uh, Dave Leviathan Prim, good to see you back, says, is Power Supply Steve going to be appearing? No, Power Supply Steve has, has been removed from live stream duties for now because I suspect that, uh, so that's a Corsair AX1600i. It's, it is a very good power supply objectively, but uh, it's also a smart power supply, and for overclocking, I think some of the protections don't really turn off when you want them to, like going from multi-rail to single rail. So I stopped using it for now because uh, it was tripping OCP. So we're using a, a dumb power supply, the EVGA 1600 watt T2, which in this instance, dumb just means it doesn't have any circuitry trying to do smart things. It's, it's very simple. It's built for overclocking. It just, just pushes power, and whatever happens, happens. You can deal with it. Uh, okay, so we need to write these scores down. This is, in fact, an improvement. This is how I would walk through it, like I said earlier. So if you're taking notes or trying to follow along, I would log it the same way. Um, I actually, let me try and give me a second, Andrew, before we show this, but let me make sure. Is that full? Uh, I make that full screen. There's better ways we could do this, but this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> So sorry for the primitive way to show this, but um, this is how I, uh, how I take a log while I'm working on stuff. So I'll type in like uh, the settings I've changed. I do a column for the, each test I'm running, and then I just keep track of it as I go. So that's how I would do it if I were you working at home. Physical notepad always works great too. OK. So. Uh, we're good there. Let's, at this point, you could just use Ryzen Master if you want. I still go to BIOS because I trust it more and I'm used to it, but um, you could go to Ryzen Master or some other overclocking utility. We're going to switch to Profile 1 and then we're going to switch it to Manual. And uh, we're going to expand CCD0. So there's one CCD. I don't have it deleted chip, unfortunately, here, but um, the CCD is like the, the chiplet with the cores on it, and then you have the IO die as well. Um, this has one, whereas like a 3900X would have two CCDs. So Ryzen Master thinks this is our best core with the star next to it, but what we're going to do is just lock all these with this button here in lockstep uh, and then bring it up. So we're at 44 now. Let's just go to 45. 
This is what I don't like is I, I don't really know exactly what the voltage control does in this program versus BIOS. But we're going to run this. So we're at 4.5 now. And the goal is going to be to bring down voltage, like I said. But you, know, you just want to see if it works first. I'm going to run hardware info in one of these runs, too, to show you what you can look for there. So oh, I have a, this is not going to be a valid run, so let me just cancel that. So if this open in the background, we might as well run this first because it's open. And then I close Ryzen Master, it should still apply. OK, uh, let me catch up on the Super Chats for a second while that runs. Nick DeVere, $2. Put that LN2 to use and make some Dane Dippin' Dots. <laughs> if you mean actual Dippin' Dots, I don't know how to do that, but I guess it can't be too hard. I know you can make ice cream with liquid nitrogen with, like, I guess, milk and sugar. I don't really know what else you need. Uh, if you mean pour it into the reservoirs, which is what I thought of when you said that, then that is something I considered. It would be a horribly inefficient use of liquid nitrogen, but it would make the water colder. Next one is from Snake Juice, $5. Steve, Roman has still not sent my wife that 011 Mini. Help. I think this is a joke from the previous stream, if I remember correctly. And if that's the case, then um, I don't know if I would expect to get the O11 Mini. But if you actually bought one, then that's even more interesting because they're not out until August. Uh, Nori, where is the GN Patreon TikTok account or when uh, launching? I have no plans to. I don't use Instagram or, or TikTok. I'm aware of their existence. Existences, I guess. So 30, oh, I wrote 3,200. Uh, oh, that was for the memory, right? So 3,200, 4.5. We're still 1.4 here. And we write down 75.83, and we're going to write down 25.48. So there's a very, very marginal uplift that is uh, of debatable value here, but it, there is uplift nonetheless. And then we're going to do Cinebench R20. And then next, I'm going to show you the stuff I like to use uh, hardware info for without changing any further settings. Uh, Sean D says, I've got a five pound bag of sand over here. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. How many 3800 XTs can I trade it for? Uh, wish the XTs were more impressive, but we know what AMD is doing. Yes, yes, we definitely do. Uh, a five pound bag of sand, I feel like is, is probably make a lot of 3800 XTs. I don't know quite how many, but you could try emailing Lisa Sue and asking her if you can donate five pounds of sand for making more CPUs and who knows, maybe they'll give you like a free t-shirt or something in exchange for it. I'm not sure that it's not not sure that they're gonna just like grow a silicon crystal out of the bag of sand, but they could always try. Uh, so for overclocking steps at this point, we're mostly through how I do the the all core stuff. It's gonna be voltage tuning after this, which is where we're gonna get hardware info involved. Hardware info is monitoring software. It's pretty good, but monitoring software always has inaccuracies. You're never going to get as close to the real measurement as, say, the back of an MLCC cap on the or an MLCC cap on the back of a socket, for example. Do a motherboard out? Yes. So this motherboard's gross because it's covered in Vaseline for overclocking. Uh, which you don't need to do for the type of overclock we're doing today. So like, these are all coded for insulation, but you know those are the caps. Uh, you can look up a guide or, or probe the V-Core VRM yourself to find one, but ideally what you do is you would probe two sides of one of these, which can be a bit dangerous if you slip and bridge them, and that would give you the, the real V-Core. But SVI2 is really pretty Pretty accurate in hardware info these days. Good enough, anyway. Depends a bit on board. 4086, let's write that down. It's 4086, that is an improvement. Our last one was 3977, that was 4.4, this is 4.5. So this is the process we would go through. And then uh, what I like to do that I haven't been showing too much here is run hardware info as well. And this is for a few reasons. So let me move this over here so you can see it. First reason is uh, this will help validate that Ryzen Master actually worked, or whatever tool you're using, or BIOS even. So you see 45 here. 
Uh, VID, we don't really need to pay any attention to today. Um, for the rest of this stuff, other useful things would be, I guess, looking at like uh, the usage, for example, in certain applications, if you're trying to figure out what kind of core utilization you have. The temperature is going to be really useful, which is T-Dye. So that's T-Dye right there. We're at like 40-ish right now. So T-Dye is the actual dye temperature. There's a lot of sensors on it. My understanding is that this averages the sensors. There's like hundreds of thermal sensors throughout the chip. I don't know which ones it's averaging for this, but um, that's the one that's important though. And then you can check your memory clocks in here, validate those. There's another window hardware info has that's just a summary. That's really good also. This shows our timings. So th these are auto remember uh, 32 and it autoed them to 16, 16, 16, 36, which is super loose for what this kit of memory can do. 560 RFC is pretty bad also. So we'll, we'll have a lot of room to improve fixing that later. Uh, RFC, I like to, with the better kits, I like to try and push it down below 200. That's the refresh cycle time. RFC is the, uh, the time between refreshes. Um, command rate's one. And then what other stuff would be useful? Uh, power reporting deviations in here somewhere. And that's useful. We talked about that in a whole separate video. So anyway, what, what I'm going to look at right now is just T-Dye. The only reason I care about that is making sure I'm not overloading my cooler, which uh, definitely not here because it's running. But if you're like, you're trying to figure out how to overclock your CPU the first time, uh, keeping an eye on T-Dye is advisable. So you can just make sure you're within the, the confines of what your cooler can handle. That way you don't work all the way through these higher voltages and then find out it's a temperature you don't want to run 24-7. Keeping in mind that it's, it's probably not under load 24-7 unless you do folding or something. So we're at 79.80. It's a little high, but uh, I don't know. Ryzen, I, my threshold for tolerance on, on temperature is a bit lower than Intel. Intel, I'm, I don't really care, up to 90 or so, 95, whatever. I wouldn't recommend running it that way all day, but just in terms of getting like a, a high clock at Intel, I'm, I leave it at like 90, 95 as if I'm really trying to be competitive with a normal cooler. For 24 seven use, it's totally up to preference, but uh, I like to see numbers below 90 for Intel. Uh, mid eighties is fine, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. There is, there is some potential impact to lifespan, but the more important impact is that I think about is less about the CPU and more about the cooler. So as the system ages, you get more dust in there, stuff like that. If you're in, if you're at 90 already, the minute something changes for the worse, you're, you're hitting TJ Maxx. So I like to be under 90 for Intel. AMD, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't really decided yet. I keep it in the, like around 80 if I can, but it's, it's a lot of its preference. There's, there's some, science to some of it, like avoiding TJ Maxx, but I like to keep it towards uh, 80 or below if I can, just because I, I find that works a bit better for stability on the AMD CPUs. Okay, so that's how I would log temperature. We're completely fine right now. Let's go ahead and uh, I guess we can do this through Ryzen Master again, or we can go through BIOS either way. Um, this is going to be the last clock we're setting here, and then we're going to start bringing down the voltage. So again, like I said, exact same process I would follow. Uh, now, I, I would keep pushing this up if I were testing this for the first time. If I were you and you're working on your system, you're trying to figure out the max frequency, i just leave this thing alone at 1.4 until you kind of hit the, the peak and then bring it down. But I've already tested this chip. I know 4.6 is it. I know we're not going to get 4.7 out of it on this cooler. So we're going to stop here and just pretend like we uh, naturally found, organically found the, the limitation of the CPU and the cooler. So 4.6 is going to be that last run. We're going to get some numbers. Let me do super chats and stuff like that for a minute. And then I'll look at normal chat in a second to try and answer some questions. Okay, so Tom Kavulik or Kavulik, 50 bucks. Thank you. That's a lot. Says so just bought a mouse pad. Damn, that's, so you sent money and you bought a mouse pad. Well, thank you. Uh, great work, Steve and team. No question even. This. It's not even a question I can answer. How about like, like um, Steve, should I buy or wait for Ryzen 4000? That's always a common one. I guess we'll never know what I think about that because Tom didn't ask. Thank you very much for the, the support though. Blendinator, $5, blender, period, drink, exclamation point, and then a, uh, a beer mug emoji. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Doctor Who, eight six seven five three zero nine two dollars. Have you had tater tots lately? If no, why not? Uh, well, unfortunately, Joe hasn't visited lately, so no, I don't think I have. No, I have not. So once once Joe's back, we'll have to try and get some. Uh, Nori. Your thoughts? Most of Asus Z490 ROG MOBOs don't have PCIe 4, in quotes, hardware compared to MSI Gigabyte Z490 boards. Uh, also, how is Snowflake doing? Snowflake's doing well. I got some new, um, some new shots for playing with some uh, cat toys recently I need to try and cut together for the other channel. But, uh, yeah, so PCIe 4 hardware is tricky because technically Intel hasn't actually committed to PCIe 4 being a thing for Rocket Lake. It's just like they, they hope it is, but they haven't committed to it, to the motherboard makers either. So the motherboard makers like ASRock and I guess MSI apparently, anyone who's claiming PCIe Gen 4 support for Rocket Lake is kind of going out on a limb where if Intel's like, you know what, actually we can't do it and we thought we could, then, then those motherboard makers are kind of screwed. Um, so that's the reason ASUS is being more conservative about it. EVGA is also being more conservative about it. They don't want to uh, claim things that they're not sure they can that, that Intel can deliver. So let me write this one down. This was our last one, so 4.6. We've got it 1.4. Now we need to go through the process of bringing this down. Uh, actually, I need to run time spy first because we, I, I like to have numbers for each step of the way so that I can verify everything later and create some cool data anyway. You can share online or something. If you do stuff this way and you share the data, it is a lot more useful than what most of the posts I see in forums are, which are like, I'm running 4.4 gigahertz, 1.2 volts all day, no problem. And then they, they never give you any more information about what that really means. So this would be a much more helpful way. Uh, let me do one more super chat and then look at the normal chat. So Laszlo Gear, I'm going to go with, says, Ryzen 4XXX or just get 10900K gaming with 2080 Ti? <laughs> Maybe you think that there's a 1080, there's a 10900K gaming part. That would be good, good uh, expansion for Intel. So I mean, if you're only gaming, uh, by your weight, the answer I have is always, uh, always going to be just, are you happy with your system now? And if the answer is no, it's driving me crazy, it's slowing down my work, or I'm not happy with the frame rate with the games I play, I, I would just build. Unless a, a launch is like this week or maybe next week. Uh, I would just build, especially because inventory is always questionable on new parts anyway. If you're pretty happy with it, then wait. Now, 4000 or 10900, I, I, I don't know how good Ryzen 4000 is going to be. I suspect it won't pass the 10900K's FPS if you're only gaming, but I don't have it. So I, I, you know, I can't commit to that, but I would guess it won't. Uh, but it absolutely could. So if you didn't want a computer now, I would just build one now. Ultimately, the difference between them um, if let's say 10900K does get beaten by Ryzen 4000, I don't think you're going to see like double digit margins. So uh, if you need one now, just build now. Okay, so those are our numbers. I've logged them all. And now what we need to do is work on bringing down the voltage, which actually I'm going to do that in BIOS because I trust it more to represent what I, I think I'm working with. Any thermal tests planned for a case full of hard drives now? <laughs> No, that is not a, a test I've really thought of. Uh, let's see. Do you think Asus is a more complicated motherboard to overclock? I always felt like it was too stupid proof. <laughs> uh, I can do what I want without any problems on gigabyte boards. They're mostly the same, like with AMD especially. AMD packages this whole section of BIOS right here, this AMD overclocking one. This is all provided by AMD, all this. They don't have any input, the, the board makers. So that part's standardized. The obnoxious thing is that now you have an AMD overclocking tab and you have like three places you can access some of these settings and it becomes nebulous as to which one is overriding which, which I find annoying. But do I think ASUS is more complicated? I, I, in a general sense, no. Um, I think the really, really high-end ASUS boards, like the $800 boards, have some features that uh, sometimes I haven't been able to find on competing boards, you know, for the same chipset. So they can get pretty advanced, but uh, I think for the most part, I'm trying to think if there's like a, I don't like working with the ASRock BIOS. Um, 
but the big three are all pretty similar. Okay, so we know that 46 is good at this point. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I guess if you're, if you're just joining the stream, the kind of intro to this at the beginning was that our goal today is to, to walk through the process that I actually walked through for determining an, a stable overclock on a new CPU. And so our start was, let's get multiplier dialed into the max, which is 46 on this chip, and do that by setting a higher voltage than necessary. Then we're going to bring the voltage down and find the point where it crashes. So that'll at some point, we're going to get a crash, probably a couple. Once we've done that, uh, the next goal is infinity fabric and then memory. So um, this is intended to help people kind of learn how to do this stuff. So I, I already know roughly where the stability point is. I'm going to expedite this, but um, if I were doing this for real live, I'd, I'd probably, because I hate crashes, <laughs> I'd probably go down to like 1.38 and then 1.36, 1.34. I would keep doing that until it crashes. So let's do like 1.34. Do I need to change anything else? I don't think so. So first thing is, does it boot? That's the first uh, determination we need to make. It should. Sometimes they act screwy during streams, though. Oh, I don't have the SSDs in, so we're going to do that. I unplug these when I restart just because it's uh, easier than hitting delete all the time. Okay. <clears throat> uh, reading the chats. Where is Extreme GT 1030 overclocking? I don't. So here's, I guess, an insider story for the stream is when the 1650 launched, that like really boring card I, from a, a video card manufacturer, I got a fully unlocked BIOS that'll allow any power you could put into it. I was going to do a stream with it, and we were so overrun with other hardware to review, I never did. But my goal was to do liquid nitrogen overclocking with the 1650 because we could push 500 watts into the card if we wanted. It would definitely blow the card up. But uh, I thought it would be interesting to see if it could be like a, a higher end card. OK. Let's start with the simple stuff and just run CB again. And this is not. A stability test. I can't really stress that enough. If it survives Cinebench, it doesn't mean it's stable. Uh, Cinebench is not not a long enough workload. It's not intensive enough. I like to use Blender for it. You could use um, Prime 95, stuff like that. And unfortunately, the format of the stream, we're not really going to do it exactly the way I would. So what I would do is we have Blender projects we use. If you have Blender projects, cool. You could probably download some. You could, I would suggest Prime95 as an alternative to this, although it's a little bit on the abusive side, almost unrealistically so, but uh, people like Prime Stable. So you get Prime 26.6 for non-AVX or 29.2 or later, uh, more recent for AVX. And um, you would basically just run that and, and see if the CPU survives. And I don't mean like, is it going to blow up? Because obviously you don't want that. What I mean is, is it going to crash with the voltage? So unless you've set a really unsafe voltage, you shouldn't be killing anything. Uh, people, I think, are afraid of overclocking when they really don't need to be. This kind of stuff that I'm doing right now, there's no real risk here. We're, we're, not, we're not changing stuff that's going to hurt it. Um, if you start setting voltages like 1.5, that's bad. And, and also, you shouldn't be applying the things I'm saying to like Intel parts or vice versa because they work differently. So this did, this did pass, like it worked with that voltage. Uh, and what I would normally do is I would run like our Blender workload and um, probably walk away for 10 to 20 minutes, come back. And if it's crashed and come back to the desktop, then I'll, I'll increase the voltage. And uh, if not, then I'll decrease the voltage. So if it's stable after, say, 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes in prime, blender, whatever, that's normally when I, I decrease voltage. And then at the end of it, what I like to do is maybe run it for, like, let's say, one to two hours. If we're talking about a production system, I'd probably run it longer than that so you don't have any, any bad crashes when you're doing something important. But you know, for purposes of figuring stuff out, a lot of people run it overnight, too. Uh, we're going to do, like, one point. 
1.32. I think this is stable at 1.287 get, which would be about 1.3 volts set for this, uh, this board. Okay, let me catch up on Super Chats. I see a lot of questions. <clears throat> I'm running, uh, let's see, we're like 40 minutes behind on the, the Super Chats, meaning that, you know, I'll, I'll get through them pretty quickly because there's only so many per hour. Uh, last one was on Asus, I think. Okay, got the five pounds of sand one. Uh, Laszlo says, you know, let me see if I can set something up while this is going on. Uh, let's keep the camera zoomed out for a second because I don't know what settings are in here. And then, okay, that should be fine. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to run Blender while this is going. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take some super chat questions. We can integrate it with the stream cleanly in that sense and actually have this run a real stability test. So what we're going to do is a 24-hour stability test, or <laughs> we'll just read chat and let it run. Uh, I'm going to let it run a few minutes, and what I'm going to open up with hardware info. Um, you can get closer on the screen if you want now. We don't have anything important open. So uh, T-Die is one I'm going to open. And then let's just, this doesn't, this really shouldn't change, but let's go find SVI2. It's hard to see from here. SVI2. Oh, actually, it's unstable already. So you see that. That is not great, the uh, lag I just encountered there. So that, that would be a suggestion to me that maybe I need to increase the voltage. It might be too low. Even though it didn't crash, the behavior was not good. So that's something to keep an eye out for. But we're going to let it go for a second. It might just be overloaded. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on TDI. It is actually lower than what we were seeing earlier. It's because we've brought the voltage down significantly. We're at uh, 1.3 volts get now. And that's on a set of, I think, 1.32 or 4. And um, temperature should come down with that, even though the frequency is up, because the voltage is lower. So we're going to let that run for a little bit. Let me take some super chats, and then we'll get back to that one. Uh, OK, so. Oh, I answered Laszlo's already. Jeff Allers, how likely is 3600 RAM to not be stable with a Ryzen CPU? Asking with a 3600X, tough X570, 36C15, only stable at 32. RAM isn't the issue, they say. You could have a bad memory controller, I guess. I feel like with the 3000 series, you should be able to pretty consistently hit 3600. With, if you're asking about Ryzen 1, I would say it's very likely that it wouldn't work with 3600. But Ryzen 3 should be, should be pretty common that you can hit that. So maybe try the timings. Uh, I would probably go through like command rate, uh, go through secondary timings, check RFC, check TCWL, check uh, obviously the primary timings, and then voltage. Uh, a lot of these boards, you say, Tough gaming. A lot of boards, when you apply XMP, will not apply the voltage. They'll leave it at 1.2. So you, you need to probably bring it up to 1.3, check the RAM sticks, but that's most likely what it is for D4, uh, 1.35. And then that should probably help you out. But uh, it's possible that it's the CPU. I just don't think that's likely. Evo Cotty Productions. Good evening, Steve. Tell Ocular Moses I said he is still the best cameraman and master of blender happy overclocking andrew do you have any commentary uh thank you andrew says uh thank you <laughs> uh, tcc laviger tc claviger six dollars no message thank you mustangs by matt twenty dollars uh been able to catch a few of these lately patrick <laughs> uh hugh and malware put my overseas job on hold they say Still getting paid, so that's nice. Been able to go full time on my own content. I still have that 10 terabyte hard drive. Want a 16 terabyte? I'm assuming you mean one that's been shot with a gun, in which case, if you have no further use of it, sure, why not? We can use more hard drives that have been shot in the background. Um, going full time with your own content is huge, though. Congrats on that. I, I think Mustangs by Matt does car videos. Uh, shocking, I know. But uh, I did catch one of them on Twitter that he'd shared. I had like 50-something thousand views, which is awesome. That's, that's really good. 
So congrats on that. This looks to be, and, and Mustangs by Matt, I should add, is a long-term viewer of ours. This looks pretty good. We haven't really changed temperature. We're, I mean, 0.3 degrees is within room ambient change at this point, and uh, which I'm not logging today. So it is running. You know, this is the point where let's just pretend this was going on for 10, 20 minutes. Uh, this is the point where I would say, you know, okay, let's let's bring the voltage down. I feel pretty good about this. That said, I think I've. I've kind of shown you how we would bring the voltage down. Basically, what I do now is restart it, bring the voltage down another couple ticks. So I'd go from maybe 1.32 to 1.30 set and so forth. And you, you verify the score in Cinebench or whatever you're using. CBR20 is good for verification to make sure you're not losing points. And which shouldn't really be happening with an all core OC, but just in case. And then, uh, then I would use a longer term application for stability testing. So at this point, you've seen how we do that. I'm going to go ahead and get into the Infinity Fabric stuff now. And for that, we need to go back into BIOS. Let's see, I read some store orders. So on the store, on store.gamersnexus.net, we have the new PC component shirt. Let me grab a sample. So there's the new shirt that we have on the store. If you want to pick one up, I'll try to shout it out. No guarantees during the stream, but uh, Thomas from California picked one up. Thank you. We have a tri-blend and cotton of these. So this is a midnight blue cotton, 100%. And then we have a black tri-blend if you like that more kind of athletic, like lighter weight shirt feel. Uh, Eric from Tennessee picked up a wireframe bistro style mug. Thank you. Uh, Sergio picked uh, from Florida picked up a PC component shirt. Thank you. Let me read one more. And Michael from Massachusetts picked up an X570 chipset Metro poster. Uh, I guess I'll show the back too. So there's the back. This is a small shirt, but that's the back of the shirt. Like I said, took some inspiration from our previous uh, Australia shirt design we did. So, Infinity Fabric, I'm going to boot into BIOS, and then, then we'll start tuning the IF. Disconnect the drives, and that'll get us in BIOS quickly. What's chat saying? I want a GN human malware mask. I decided not to make those. I felt kind of, kind of weird making those. Not really what I do or specialize in. I'll let people who know how to make masks make masks. Uh, okay, so IF, that's what I said we need to do. So we're going to go to the settings tab and we're going to go to AMD overclocking, accept, and then Infinity Fabric. There are ways to do this out of this horribly buried menu, but um, you really want to keep one to one with the memory. For purposes of determining stability, though, I don't worry about that. So like if I'm pushing, let's say I want 1900 megahertz because I saw people online got 1900. If I want that, you, you want the memory to be at 3800. So uh, you want it to be one to one. Memory is DDR, so you divide it by two, I guess. But uh, one to one to one with U clock, M clock, F clock, and that would be the end goal. But for purposes of figuring out where it's even stable, what I do is I just start, I ignore the memory and I just set the infinity fabric the clock. Your goal is to really just isolate things and do one at a time so you don't complicate it and end up with something that's just frustratingly, you know, not booting all the time because then you can't really identify why it's not booting. So I find this process works really well. It is much faster than trying to do everything at once because do everything at once, it never works. Uh, 1800 is definitely stable on this, but um, some people talking about having trouble holding 19 and if there's any tips, there are some, VDDG would be the main one and I'll, I'll walk you through that in a minute. I am not positive the uh, VDG impact on like lifespan long term if you're on a higher setting but we'll I'll show you how to get it stable nonetheless 
Okay, so F clock's up. Probably the you know, Cinebench isn't really going to care about this change, so we're just going to ignore it to save time. And I'm just going to run Time Spy to hit the memory a bit here. Um, Cinebench is something I use sometimes to just strain it enough to eke out a crash, but let's just run that. And if it crashes, then we know 1800 is no good, but uh, I already know 1800 is good. I'm just going to walk you through it. So that's how I stability test. Cinebench is fine for this. Um, it's just the scores won't really be changing much, so don't expect that. But, but it'll still crash if it's unstable. Phil Habib, $2. Learned tons from your channel. Want to say thanks. Well, thank you. I hope that this different approach to streaming we're doing today is, uh, is also helpful to you, and, and maybe you can walk away with some useful information from it. Indrajit Singh, back again. Uh, $5, thank you. Hello and good night. I've been trying and failing to switch my sleep pattern to a day one, UK, but here's money towards pizza. Yes, if you are trying to go to, I'm not sure if a day sleep pattern means you're going to sleep in the day or you have a normal sleep pattern, but uh, either way, our content doesn't go up at predictable or normal times, so it does make it difficult, sorry. Uh, Eric, 666, $6.66. So are you overclocking on AMD or overclocking on Intel? Oh, I misread that. Or overclocking on Intel because they, they dropped the L in their marketing materials. Also, when will you be getting Satan cables on the Gamers Nexus store? You joke, but I was considering, we have so many SATA cables, I was considering uh, doing something at some point, maybe where we like include a SATA cable with every order or something. I don't know if people care about that, but I don't want them. Uh, I don't think we can even guarantee that they work. I don't know. They're just out of motherboard boxes. But we do have way too many. So 7686, 2582 is the scores. I'm going to log this in my notepad file. So 46, we're at 1.3. Uh, I think it's two set, 1.3 get. Let's go with get voltage. So I'm write down get. And then we didn't do our 20. So 7686 is a, a score decay from previously. Uh, however, that is expected because Infinity Fab previously we're at 7780. And that was with 3200 uh, for the RAM and everything else auto, including IF. Now we've broken rank where IF is no longer one to one with the memory. So it is expected to have a score decay. This is, this is normal. But all we're trying to do is see you know, what's stable. So now we're going to go in and try and get 1900 stable. This is the one where it should, I think we should experience some stability issue with this. And uh, you'll get to see the process of troubleshooting that and trying to stabilize something that's almost stable. I'm probably going to use Cinebench to, to verify that one, maybe Blender. Let's see. Dan Trader, $20, thank you. Hello, Steve, just want to say thank you to you and Gamers Nexus for sharing the honest and detailed information. It has assisted me in researching my first build since my Pentium 4. Wow. Take care and don't forget the tater tots. How you know someone's been watching a few streams. Since the Pentium 4, man. Well, that's cool. That's, I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, as you build it, I'm curious how you felt about if things have changed or not. Because, I mean, the essentials are the same, but uh, I'm sure that encountering all the RGB crap was definitely either awesome or a huge headache, depending on what you got. That's, that's certainly new, though. It's not like the, uh, what do they call them? The <sighs> cold cathode tubes that they used to do. So we're just going to set uh, 1900 here. And this is how I, I do it. So I, I started, when I tested this chip originally, I started at 1800. I knew pretty much everything can do that. I went to 1900, I, it crashed, and then I tried to figure out how to get it working. So we're going through the same process again now. So basically at this point in the stream, what we've done is, like I said at the beginning, the goal is to, to help show the process of overclocking an AMD CPU. I think the full start to finish process without memory tuning only takes me maybe an hour to really figure it out. Um, and then memory changes a lot, but the, the goal is figure out all core OC, figure out the lowest possible voltage with that OC, and if you need to bring it down or not. Uh, figure out Infinity Fabric, which is that's the step we're on now, and then memory. Okay, so 
Let's run Cinebench and just see if it crashes. If not, I might run Blender. I think this should not be stable. So at some point we should encounter a crash. I just don't know what application is going to trigger it. Andreas Sheriff, $10. Oh, hey, Steve. Uh, my buddy, they say, Dr. Lisa Sue called me today and said she saw your review. She asked me to pass on a message. She said, quote, we are not pleased. Just wanted to let you know. Ciao. I think the, the ciao at the end makes it feel uh, more threatening than it might otherwise. <laughs> I'm, I'm positive that you're correct. They're probably not pleased. Uh, Cassio Sales says, uh, Hey, Steve, planning on testing budget air coolers? Yeah, definitely. We have the setup for it. Uh, it's a time issue, but we've been doing the high-end stuff. I need to work down to the low-end stuff. Let's see. Amber Oakhart. I'm trying to catch up on these. I'm, uh, we're, we're doing better on time. Amber Oakhart says, uh, I use Hardware Info, CPU ID, MSI Afterburner when testing overclocks under game load, as well as benchmarks like Cinebench, Prime 95, 3D Mark, and RAM test by Karu. I'm not familiar with that one. I will open a tab and look that one up for later. Um, those all sound good to me. CPU ID is good for just verifying stuff. Afterburner is fine. Not my favorite, but it, it works well enough. Ridiculous Prime. $10 says, what CPU is this? It is not the 7980 XE, but it is a 3600 XT. So this survived this one. Um, let me open up this thing and just see uh, see if it dies during this one. It, if it's going to take like a few minutes to die, I know that this one will fail without setting higher voltages in some places, but uh, if it's not going to die in a reasonable amount of time during the stream, then what I'll do is is just go through the voltages anyway. Or we can try even higher IF, I guess. And again, when I say uh, die referring to the CPUs, I'm really just referring to crashing here. So you shouldn't be worried about, like, with reasonable settings, you shouldn't be worried about killing the part. Uh, Alex Saxton, $20, thank you, says, controversial, but in your personal opinion, what is the safe voltage for Ryzen 3000 underwater for a gaming workload. <sighs> I never like giving an answer to this because it's like no matter what I say, I'm wrong because everybody has a different idea of what a safe voltage is. So like if I say, if I try to go overly conservative and say 1.3, then people are gonna be like, oh, I've been running at 1.42 for six and a half years on my Ryzen 1 chip. so. There's, it's like can't possibly win. Uh, so a personal opinion is, I mean, for reviews, as an example, these are not systems that are up daily. They get built, they get tested, they get torn down. So for those, we're fine with running 1.4 set, uh, which means the gap might be like 1.3 something, 1.38. So uh, temporary use, that's kind of where we stand with it. I haven't seen any degradation on any of the parts, even the oldest ones, which is expected because they run for days at a time, then they're done for a while. For daily use, I think I'd probably probably try to stick around like 136, 135 myself for, for get. Um, I know that people think that they've had degradation at that voltage, but I know that a lot of people also don't know what they're talking about. So it's really hard to know because safe voltages for a CPU, you need, you need to be AMD to really know. And they might not really fully know either. So really what you need is a lot of data from the field. And that's hard to collect because everyone uses their computer differently. So uh, it's just like, it's not really possible for me to actually know. But that's my personal thoughts is like 135, 136 is where I'd want to be. I'm not really worried about degradation. A lot of times people think that they're seeing degradation of the chip when in fact what they're seeing is they started playing a different game that wasn't out when they overclocked it. That game's doing something different where now it's not stable anymore. So a lot of the time that's the case, especially with like GPUs. But uh, SOC is a little bit different. That one's got a harder line where it's, it, you start getting degradation. So like really old Ryzen, one, one, two, one, three, uh, for like 1000 series, you don't really want to be there for long, like one, three, especially. Uh, newer stuff can handle a bit better. 
Okay. Oh, and I, I need to note this too, because we're already getting like that. I've been running 146 daily for about a year, no issues. So a couple things. Set voltage and get voltage are different, number one. Uh, workload matters. So, no, it didn't crash. Um, workload matters. So the, if you're running like a 24 seven workload all the time and the voltage is, is pinned, then it's more abusive on everything. Whereas if you're kind of using it a couple hours a day, whatever, it's, it's different. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's do, this is, this is working fine. So I'm actually just going to push it up to like 1933 or something. I don't think that should work, but we'll see. Maybe it'll be better than I thought. Uh, Michael A.T. I'm still catching up on the super chats, but we're doing better than most times with these. So that's good. Uh, I'll read your question in a second. So I need to set Infinity Fabric. Let's do, let's try 1933. That, actually, let me check the, um, check the voltages that we have in case any of them got left when I was working on it last time. So VDDG, no, nope, that's auto, okay. That's the one we're gonna tune later to get it stable whenever it stops being stable. Oh, that's convenient. Michael AT had no message, just sent money. Well, thank you very much. Uh, TCC Lavager said, get an Optimus Foundation AM4 block, far better uh, than all the others on the market. I've done extensive testing on it. I mean, I, <laughs> we, even without extensive testing, I think I believe you because those are impressive looking blocks, so. I think we're, we might be getting some instability now. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'll probably try and reach out to them, see if we can get one or buy one or something, because I'm not too happy with the blocks I've tried on this setup so far. I think they're inefficient. Okay. What does set and get mean? Set and get is a term I picked up from, this is unstable, by the way, so now we're at a point where we can Try and fix it. So it's a term I picked up from Vince from Kingpin, but set and get is how I refer to the number I type into BIOS versus the actual number that comes out. So um, because of LLC and VDroop and stuff like that, if you type in 1.4, uh, you're if you have like a, a, a less aggressive LLC, your actual voltage might be something like 1.35, 1.34. So get is the, the one I like to track, the one that it's actually at when it's under a, a heavier workload as opposed to the number I type in. But um, it does depend on, on the workload, you know, what the voltage is. So like 1.5 volts doing nothing on desktop, it's not going to hurt it. A lot of people were really freaked out about that when they first saw it, but it is not going to hurt it. There's no, in other words, there's no current. There's nothing happening. There's no current really uh, going through the system. 1.5 nothing going on, low amperage, low current, uh, it's fine. But once you get into high current scenarios and, and those higher voltages, now you might have a problem. Uh, ways to, I, I check SVI2 for what I call get. Ideally, you use a multimeter and check the back of the motherboard, but that's kind of a pain. So SVI2 is my, my good enough approach. Um, so that was not stable. What I would next do to try and stabilize that to get it to boot when it's not booting, it's not a good sign. Normally, you're, you're, you're going to have trouble getting it to actually work as opposed to crashing. Crashing is easier to fix because you're borderline stable. What I'm going to try to do, though, is set a, um, some VDDG numbers. And I have some notes on this I need to reference for the CPU. Let's see. So... We're going to try 1100 IO and 1000 CCD. These are kind of like sub voltages of SOC is, is my understanding of it anyway. Actually, I think it even tells you. It represents voltage for the data portion of the infinity fabric if uh, derived from the CPU SOC uncore voltage, VOD SO, VDD SOC, uh, then VDDG can Approach, but not exceed SOC, which is currently 1.2. So it is not exceeding SOC. Okay. 
Uh, Mark Connor says, oh yeah, mouse mod mod mouse mat ordered. I don't know if that means a mod mat and a mouse mat or one or the other, but uh, saying I can't wait for August. That is, yeah, they're both on the way. So uh, thank you for picking one up. Let's see. This is, okay, this is kind of a, a basic question I guess I should answer. Why do I get higher FPS on an R5 3600 2070S at 1440 than GN reports for the same CPU with 2080 Ti at 1080p. So, because it, literally everything is different is the answer. Uh, you probably have different settings configured. You're testing a different, well, do you even list a game? No. Okay, there's not even a game listed. Uh, so, a different game, different settings. Uh, it could be different part of the game, for example. It's not uncommon for some of these games today to have like a, a scene that runs 40 FPS higher than another scene. Or if you like look at the sky a lot in your run, then that'll change the frame rate a lot, positively in most cases. And then logging versus just like kind of spot checking it. You know, we run an active log every millisecond of the game and, uh, and report on it. So there's a lot of reasons. Room ambient can impact it too, yeah. Uh, everything, cooling can impact it. Um, in our case, our numbers should account for things like cooling, but uh, if we're testing different areas, different games, whatever, different settings, it's all going to be different. The thing you need to take away from benchmark videos is not really the exact numbers in most instances, unless you have a specific game they're testing that you care about. It's going to be the relative numbers. So it's like that's why we always give percentages, percent better, X or Y. Um, that's what you need to look for, because that's, that's the one that'll scale. That number will scale to your usage, whereas the absolute FPS number might not really mean anything unless you can apply the, the exact settings. So this is, this is not stable with those settings, which means 1900 is going to be our, uh, I could do some more with it, but I, I already pre-tested it. 1900 is going to be our limit. So I have just hit the reset button on the board. And it should be going back into BIOS. One thing you have to be careful with these gigabyte boards too is the uh, the dual BIOS where they'll boot into the other one if if your overclocks are unstable, which is kind of a pain. Let's try and get this in. So 1900 is going to be it now. I already know that if we want 24/7 stability, I do need those VDDG voltages higher. So uh, 1100 and 1000 is what we're going to run with through those at 1900. 1900 was stable in, in the stream for the few minutes we tested it, but it's not stable long term on the CPU. <laughs> Home tab, any thoughts on CPUs being made with lab grown diamond rather than silicon? Absolutely none at all. I don't know anything about it. I wish I could provide some brilliant insight, but I can't. I have to reset BIOS. There's some buttons on the board that I'm trying to use to get this booted back in. A brilliant thing that Buildzoid taught me recently. Uh, let me grab something. I'll show you the trick. <clears throat> I don't have it easy. Accessible, I don't think. Let's see, check another room. Well, I don't see it out, but uh, we have this this reset button I like to use. That's like standalone from the system. Something he taught me recently was connecting the reset button of the case if you have one to the clear CMOS jumper on the board is like probably the biggest time saver I've ever had working with anti platforms. Getting CMOS to clear is a real pain sometimes. These buttons don't, don't really always work. Okay, it is back. So clearly uh, 1933 was not stable. So we're gonna go with 1900. Now this resets all the settings. You should be saving profiles while you go, but I'm going to go ahead at this point and just load one that I know works. 
So this was my final profile I did when I was uh, doing testing for a video that's going up soon on super tuning the 3600 XT. It was mostly memory. So I ran 46. I set the voltage higher than is necessary. I think we can do like 1.32 or something. But uh, that was just to make sure I could walk away from it and not have it crash during Blender or something. Um, IF, I ended up, all the other settings I showed earlier are, are pretty much the same in terms of like the disabling stuff at a system level. Um, bypassing current limitations is a big one. You need to turn all those off for overclocking if you're trying to really push it. Uh, voltage protection, stuff like that, that's all off. I showed that earlier. But yeah, IF's at 19 here. And then VDDG is what allowed me to get it stable. So I did 1000 for VDDG CCD. I did uh, 1100 for IOD. Those are both under SOC. They can't be higher than SOC voltage. And I left SOC at 1.2. And this was basically, uh, it, was, it was prime stable. It was like blender stable for an hour. And it didn't crash during six to eight hours of testing. So this was all good to go. Now, the memory is the last part of this equation. With Infinity Fabric now at uh, 1900, we need memory to be one to one. So previously we were testing at 32x for the multipliers, 3200 megahertz memory. Now we're at 38. And that's going to get us to uh, 3800 megahertz, obviously. And for the timings, these are, these are the ones I typed in. But we're going to clear these for now and run some baseline tests and then retune them. So I'm going to clear them all to auto, let it do whatever it wants. And then we'll, uh, we'll tune them back to where I just had them here. And you can see the, the difference. And I'll show you some of the process of tuning the memory. It's a huge, massive pain in the ass. And nobody likes it. Actually, I think High Cookie might like it. But that's just weird. So I don't think anybody else <laughs> likes doing memory tuning. Even Buildzoid doesn't really speak that highly of doing memory. Joe doesn't particularly uh, enjoy going through the process either. And the reason is it's just. It's kind of slow. It's just a lot of patience. Uh, sometimes you'll have a lot of crashes. I didn't really encounter that with this kit. The kit's super good. But at some point, you're going to hit crashes. And otherwise, just one setting at a time if you're doing it properly. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So I'm not sure why we're not uh, booting here. I need to check maybe what vCore was or something. Oh, it was 138. That's oh, going up. OK. Yeah, it cleared. So let's try that again. Oh, yeah, that should be right. OK. 46, 38. Oh, I bet it, I didn't know what it was. I bet when I told it to do auto time, it applied something stupid. So let's just let's do this. Let's give it times that like definitely work. So let's just give it like 15 for everything. Let's set that to 32. My rule of thumb for RAS is uh, I just multiply the two. Uh, like normally you have th kind of three primary timings you're talking about. I'll just multiply that or uh, sorry, add them together and then add two. So we've got 15, 15, that's 30. And then I add two and that's just, it's total rule of thumb. Um, I just find that it tends to be stable at that value. If the previous two are stable at, you know, half the value, I guess minus one or whatever. So that's some old knowledge I just picked up from a random forum a long time ago. And it still seems to work fine. We're going to set this to 13. I know that's what it was originally. I'm going to set these to auto. I'm going to set that to, to auto. And then we're going to set this. Originally, it was 500 when we were in there earlier. So let's just go with that. Uh, RFC is refresh cycle. So that's going to be a really important one for scores. And then uh, TFAW was 48 originally, which is super high. That's four active window. Uh, lower is going to be better for most of these. Like TFAW, you, you definitely want a lower number. And write latency, we were going to want to get down towards 10 or 11. Uh, another important one, other than primary. So RFC is important. FAW is important. Uh, TCWL, I've found to be pretty helpful. And then TRC, I've been able to drop a lot from the auto settings normally. OK. So let's just boot that. That should, oh, it's the memory voltage. I don't think I set memory voltage. That's probably going to. Not be happy with that. We'll see. Because this, um, OK, all right, so it's still in there. Cool. 
So we'll get a baseline score and then we'll tune that down. Someone's asking about calculating the power requirements of a computer. Um, trying to figure out, I guess, how, much, how many watts you really need. A lot of people overbuy on the wattage. Other than using power supply calculators, I would recommend the do-it-yourself approach of go find reviews that measure at the cables. And, uh, oh, I see the, um, the note from Crazion too. So uh, I would check like the at the cables power for the GPU, the CPU you're buying, add them together. Don't do an, a wall draw unless you can figure out the delta from baseline. And, um, and that would be a good way to quickly gauge the power requirements of the system. So 3D Mark is the only one we're going to run now. I don't care about Cinebench because it's not going to scale much with memory. And we're just going to verify how much higher it is when we go from this to the uh, tighter timings that I spent most of the night tuning the other day. Now this will also compare to our 3200 numbers. Let me try and get through a bunch of super chats because we're getting sort of towards the end of the memory stuff. So we'll be able to close out the basics soon. So let me read through as many as I can quickly. Uh, let's see. Lil Kool-Aid Man. $5, thank you. Is 70 degrees Celsius good load temperature for first stock 3700X? I feel my push pull X63 should do better. Uh, will GN mouse pads come in red or black and gray? Keep up the awesome work, thank you. So mouse pads, we currently obviously we have the ones on the site like this, you know, this mouse mat where it's all blue and black. Uh, we don't have any immediate plans for red or black gray. I'm aware of the interest. I don't know when we'll try and do something you know, like that or a different color. We don't have any current plans for it. So it actually did finish. I'll get to that in a second. Um, other question of the 70C temperature is completely fine for a 3700X. I think you're fine there. Sean D, $20. When and if you get around to attempting to deep tune the 3900XT, maybe test if you can run higher stable clocks, I know this is going, on the six cores on one CCD over the other. I swear they're putting an awesome plus one average CCD on that CPU. Uh, I agree. Uh, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to do that on a stream probably with liquid nitrogen, I think, to do it something a bit different. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably hopefully just trust the star that's in Ryzen Master that that's the better one <laughs> and then see if we can push that higher. Like I might just run one at 43 and then see what we can do with the other. But definitely agreed. That is something I want to do. Uh, Keaton Blomquist, $10. Thank you. Just wanted to say thanks for your help with what I've been working on. It turns out a CPU can take 1.55 volt. Oh man. It turns out a CPU can take 1.55 volts on the SOC for about an hour before it's toast. Rip 2700. Yeah, that is uh, that is not the place you want to type in 1.55. Yeah. That's that's the point I was making earlier and people are asking about safe voltages. So, uh, SOC is definitely the most aggressive on degrading or killing parts. And so be really careful with SOC. Make sure you know what you're doing. Don't set vCore numbers for SOC. Also don't set 1.55 for vCore, but I'm assuming it was an accident to type that in, or maybe they're working with more extreme cooling. But yeah, that sucks. Don't go above like 1.2 SOC if you can avoid it uh, for daily. Man, an hour. I, that's it's great information. I'm sorry we had to learn it that way. Uh, Michael AT, when the review of P500, when when will the review of the P500A be? Will you review the P600S? No current plans of the P600S. It's kind of old at this point. P500A, by review standards, P500A is done. I think it's probably going up tomorrow. Um, we're going to get back to the overclocking in a second. I, I really want to catch up on these chats. Mustangs by Matt, currently editing a video while watching the live stream. 9900K, 2080 Super, and Fiber Connection. I uh, can't decide what I love more. The sound of my own voice, he says, listening to, not mine, his, listening to his own video he's editing, or your glorious hair. Well, thank you, but I can say from experience that editing videos... Uh, eventually, even if you like it now, the sound of your own voice only becomes annoying. <laughs> Next one is uh, uh, Gand oh, Gandhi Hive, 
please give Snowflake a head scratch and a kiss. Uh, I will be happy to uh, to show Snowflake attention as soon as I can get the chance to get home. Reed H, what's the minimum RPM on Noctua's NF A14 3K? How's the noise? I'm actually not sure. I uh, do I have one? I think I do have one of those, but I'm not sure what the minimum RPM is. I've only used it at the max. The noise at 3,000 is absolutely terrible. Like it's, I mean, comparatively it might be better, but it's 3,000 RPM. Um, let me get through like another maybe six of these or so, and then we'll get back to it. Evocati Productions, two things. One, uh, with Zen 2, it's generally a good idea to maximize your mem and IF clock first, and then OC the core, because your max core clock generally takes more V core with mem IF maxed out. I mean, okay, um, that's fine, but that's not the way I do it. It's just, I don't know. It's You're just getting into like, theory at that point, I feel like, and uh, I find my approach works best with the way I overclock. So, uh, two, Ryzen Master Voltage Control changed VID, so your get is, at, is usually lower than your set, even more so than if set in BIOS. This is why I use uh, BIOS for tuning the voltages like we were doing earlier, and also why I use hardware info and don't touch Ryzen Master at all um, once we get to that stage. Joe Scallon, $5. I uninstalled Ryzen Master after a failed OC and it would auto crash from loading. Yes, it does that. How do you reinstall it? Uh, it, will ex yeah. it will extract itself but not actually install. I had to fix that problem on this system. Uh, I think I did some Googling and found a registry entry. So I had to go into regedit, find some entry for Ryzen Master and delete it and then it would reinstall. So search for the, if it gives you an error message, search for the error message. Otherwise try searching for like regedit a registry, Ryzen Master, and see if you can find the entry. Uh, <laughs> I'll pronounce it the old way I used to. Nassel with a knife, $10 Canadian, thank you. If I buy a mouse pad, would you sign it for me? It'd go nicely with the rest of my GN gear, uh, signed GN gear. I definitely appreciate that you have a lot of it. We don't have a good process for doing like one-off signings, uh, but the best way to try and catch them is normally during streams when I have a guest here. So like Joe at some point will come back out and that'd be a, a great time to, to try and grab one because we'll normally do some kind of signing when we're doing a stream. Um, but otherwise I don't have a great process for one-offs just because I'm not the person shipping it. So uh, let me do one more and then get back to this stuff. So where'd you go? Uh, Nian Niu says, Steve, should I buy right now or wait for Ryzen 4000, that was in reference to my earlier one. <laughs> answer that earlier too. Yeah, well, I mean, I know this is a joke, but the real answer is, depends on if you like your computer right now or not. Leo, what's the deal with set and get? Talked about that a little bit ago. First, I heard of them recently. Google wasn't very helpful in explaining. Yeah, um, I took that terminology from Caden Penn and uh, he may have made it up, I don't know. But like I said earlier, it's just the, the phrasing I use for the number I type in versus the number that comes out for voltage with SVI2 being what I call get, but realistic you should use a DMM. So our score earlier was uh, with the 15 timings. Let's see, 3,800, 4.6, 1,900, uh, and we're ignoring, ignoring Cinebench now, 8,135, which is actually a pretty big uplift from earlier. That's gonna be 27.33. So just for perspective, this number versus the 32 number earlier that we had for memory, is going to be 8135 minus, where is it? Let's compare to 7780 was the last one we had. Divided by 7780, so new minus old divided by old. So it's 4.6% four four, four higher for that. So now what we need to do is apply the tighter timings and see what kind of uplifts we get from that, from memory. We'll have a whole separate video on this stuff coming up in very short order, it's getting uh, edited now. So um, you can check back for the, the shorter recap of the benchmarks and games and stuff. Shmimey, 350. Don't let the monster sneak up on you. I guess, Andrew, if you could just, uh, just keep an eye on behind me in case there's a monster. Apparently we need to look out for that. Uh, Duna Strig says, uh, five, $5, dollars for blue paper towels and rubbing alcohol. 
Thank you. I, I think the rubbing alcohol, I don't know how the situation is now, but last time I tried to buy some, $5 would not have gotten me very, I might have gotten like a thimble of rubbing alcohol for $5 a little while ago. So hopefully we can actually, I've been trying not to use all of it because uh, we're going to have trouble getting more. Okay, so let's just apply that profile I had and, and uh, I'll walk you through the way I go through the memory stuff. You know, my way, obviously, I'm not an expert at memory at all, even close to it, but good enough. Um, so the way I got here was, and I'm, I'm sure there's absolutely things that are not optimal, but they're, they're all better than they were stock. So that's, that's what I cared about. Um, so first of all, gear down mode is on. Uh, gear down mode right here. That is set to auto, which is enabled by default on this board at least. So gear down mode's on. That means that some of these timings will adjust the closest even number if they're not stable. It helps with system stability for memory. Uh, I talked with Bill Doid about that one. I'd recommend leaving it on. What I did is I just, I like to, to start with getting the voltage where I want it. So if you want it 135, if you want like XMP voltages, that's fine, set it there. I did 1.5 for this because I, I, you know, it was more of an enthusiast endeavor. Um, once I've got that where I want it, I start with just the primary timings. I ignore everything else. I leave it all auto, like just ignore all those numbers, pretend they're auto. So I, I don't touch those until we get primary stable. And uh, maybe better ways to do it. This is the way that works well for me though. So what I would do is I'd, I'd type in like 14, 14, 14, 14 for primary. I would take the, in most boards you'll have three of these. I'll take like the two center values, add them, add two. So that would put us at 30. So 14, 14, 28 plus two is 30. So I would test that first. And the way I would test that, I guess we can show that process too, is with Memtest Pro and with Ada. Ada I like to use for, uh, for getting some numbers in to make sure the scores are improving. And then Memtest Pro I like to use for validating that it's not throwing memory errors silently behind the scenes. This is very hard to keep up with like chat, super chat and everything else. Uh, single serving friend, SSF. There's like a bunch of missing letters. That's my best interpretation of what that means. Just want to see if you remember how to say my name. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess we know, I, or you know. I don't know if I do much. I think this is the person who might own a few PC shops on Twitter. I'm not sure though, but I, I think I'm pretty sure that's the same name. Uh, okay, so Memtest Pro looks like this. It's you. you it's like five bucks. You end up with this. Uh, you click start. It's going to tell me, hey, do you want do you want me to spawn a bunch of applications to test all the memory, or do you want to just test some of it? And we're going to tell it yes, test all the memory. This is really good stability software. So I'm going to say yes, test all the memory. It's going to pop up a few more. Now I like to just spread them out so you can see the errors. What will happen is if there's an error, it will appear in here. It will tell you like where the error occurred, and it will say memory error or something to that effect. Uh, so I normally let this go until it hits like 20%, and then I bring down the timing some more. 20% pass, I mean. And um, then once I get it to where it starts crashing, I loosen the things that it started crashing on. So if I'm tuning FAW and it starts crashing, I loosen that one. And eventually you hit a stage where you're, uh, you're not getting any errors. Here they go. So they're starting to pop up now. And at that stage, I let it run to 100% completion and then see if, um, if it passes all of it. And if so, we call it good. So this is what it looks like. This is doing a full memory test. I think we should see that reflected in Task Manager. Yeah, there you go. So 100% utilization on the memory. And I don't know how clear that is, on, depending on the zoom. Let me see what I'm looking at. OK. So the uh, percent coverage here, that's the number I'm talking about when I say I let it run 20% to start with. And that's just because I'm impatient. So I let it go only part of the way, and then I try to tune it some more. It could still definitely fail after that point, but normally it's not, not too common. And then eventually you let that get to 100 once you're at your final numbers. So that would run for a while. And in the error information box under it, you'll get errors that pop up eventually. It's not particularly easy for me to just synthetically type in a, a number, like a timing that'll get that. 
because it's just as likely we won't be able to boot or it'll crash. Um, so that's just where the error information would appear. So that's the application I like for doing the, the end of everything, make sure it all works. It's not going to throw silent errors that bring down your performance without you knowing it or crash on, you know, under a different load. Other application I like, this is a really super old install we have. It is, uh, it is not up to date. It doesn't, it has no idea what Ryzen is. This, I bought this before Ryzen existed. And um, the only thing I use though is the cache and memory benchmark. It's ADA64 is the software. I think there's a cheap or a free version maybe. Definitely a free trial version that you could use for this. There's like maybe a $20 version or something. But uh, so I let this run. The only numbers I'm going to care about are memory up top. You should probably use a newer version, but wh whatever. <laughs> um, and then what I do is I type down all these numbers. So you get a read and speed megabytes per second. You get write in megabytes per second, copy megabytes per second, and then latency in nanoseconds. And uh, so what I do is I run this. You can ignore the cache stuff. I run this for every timing I change. I only change one timing at a time. So again, I start with primary. I try to bring it down as low as I can until it crashes. And then I move on. Normally, I like to do RFC next. Uh, that's refresh cycle. I find that's the one that's most egregiously out of bounds with auto. And um, so like here you see 61.7, you 54 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes, 57 gigabytes. So you test this each time with each change and make sure it's going up or with invariance. Some of them don't actually really do anything for performance. Did we run a uh, time spy yet? I don't think we did. Let's run time spy for this one. So that would be my approach to testing the memory. Uh, after RFC, I normally do TCWL, then I normally do TFAW. Those are typically are the most egregiously, like really far out there where RFC will often be with 500 or something. You can bring it down to maybe 300. And that has an impact on gaming performance in the real world. <clears throat> OK. So Eric uh, Hebert, $10. Where's the second part of the RAM timing series? Also not a question, but can't wait to see 2020's disappointment build. 2020's disappointment build has a lot of CPUs in the running right now. It's got like. 3800 XT, 10400, 3900 XT. I don't know. We, we've still got half a year almost to go, so we'll see. Second part, uh, I don't know. It's like basically been done for over a year, but it's just a matter of getting it kind of QC'd by people in the industry we actually trust, and uh, it's more overhead for me to go chase down. So I'll try to pull that together at some point, but I, I need um, need some time to work on it. So scoring wise, that one uh, is move eighty six forty nine. That's actually significantly higher, twenty nine point oh six. So in terms of percentages, this score versus our original thirty two hundred score, seventy seven eighty divided by seventy seven eighty is uh, about eleven percent higher. And um, this score compared to the one I just ran, where it was at CL15 for the this, this same kit with a bunch of auto timings, That's uh, this is 6.3% higher than what we did a second ago when it was at CL15 plus auto timings. CL15 is what's on the sticks, so basically auto. So, I mean, yeah, you're talking 6 to 10% depending on the application. That's a lot for just memory and, and IF. So that's really where you get your gains with Ryzen, more so than with all core. All core matters, matters a lot for things that are all core intensive, but most games aren't. So memory is really where it is. So that is how I would do the basics of all of this. Uh, let me get through how many of these do we have? We don't have many. Um, I'm going to update the super chat text on the screen here, and I'm not going to read any more. Super chats after the set that are already in. So don't submit any more. I'm not going to read it after this point. 917 local time on the computer. Uh, let me get through all of these that are currently here that we haven't done yet. And um, then I'll check the, the normal chat for any follow up questions on all this stuff. And hopefully that helped. I like provide some ideas of applications we like using, processes. I'm not, like I said before, uh, 
I am by no means like an expert in memory overclocking or Ryzen overclocking, but this is just the process I go through and I hopefully that's the part that I, I really want people to take away is the steps that we go through more so than the actual numbers. Like, I think when you're starting overclocking, it's easy to get caught up in the numbers people get and write them all down and try to copy them. But that really shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be figuring out the steps of troubleshooting it, limiting the variables you're changing to one at a time, and narrowing down each setting one at a time, and just being patient with it, especially with memory. Because um, if you start trying to change too many things, it's just going to crash all the time or get stuck in boot loops or whatever, and, and that just sucks. Then you're pulling the CMOS battery all the time. So those are the steps I would use. To recap the software I liked before I do all the super chats, um, Memtest Pro, super good. Ada 64 is good just to give you some numbers uh, in addition to the, the error testing that Memtest Pro does. So I'll give you some numbers to check to make sure your scores are improving and not disintegrating as you iterate, which can happen with memory errors. Time Spy or some other, like Firestrike, whatever, some, something with a CPU test, specifically a physics test, is good for validating CPU performance, especially as a game synthesis, because games are so variable. And Cinebench R20 is good for an all-core test, to test your all-core clocks. Now, uh, obviously, the uh, Super Chat member I, I'm familiar with, Evocati Productions, has sent me some applications we've used for overclocking. Evocati Productions mentioned that He's got a different approach to it. So there's, you can kind of move around the different pieces of the equation. But I personally like to do uh, all core ratio and with a higher voltage, so one four. I'm just going to recap everything here. So one, one four or so for AMD, high all core. And then I bring down the voltage once I establish the maximum stable frequency at that voltage. And maybe target like one three, one three four, whatever. Then I do. Um, after bringing down the voltages, I do Infinity Fabric and figure that out. I ignore the memory, and I do the memory after that. And you get those one to one to one with the IF, uh, M clock, U clock, F clock, all one to one to one. And we've got videos on that explaining all of it. So that's the recap. Let me do the questions here that we haven't done yet. Um, let's see. While I'm scrolling looking for these, I guess I'll mention again, we've got the the new component shirt on store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick one of those up. We've had a, a lot of those sell during the stream, so thank you very much for the support. Glad you all like it. It has a bunch of component designs in it. So Andrew's got like VRM and uh, inductor MOSFET cap components in there. I don't, know that, I don't know that if you made this it would work as a VRM, but it certainly looks like a VRM. And then we've got a motherboard, keyboard, uh, video card, power supply, all that stuff all kind of hidden in the design. So you can pick that up on store.cameraxis.net. That is brand new today, just launched. Okay, so I found the questions. Uh, Kanza, $10, says, bought five liters of isopropyl alcohol for $35, $50 Australian. So please have some of the savings, uh, good price over there, question mark, which will come, oh, and then, then a question, which will come first, RDNA 2 or RTX 3000? Hoping for competition again. I don't know. I, I have a, well, I don't know. RDNA 2, we kind of had a roadmap for, like an official AMD roadmap. But RTX 3000 is the one that's been getting teased so much through leaks. I, it sounds like it's going to be August, September timeline for that, probably September for launch. So I'm not really positive, but we haven't heard much about RDNA 2 recently in a concrete form. So I'm going to guess RTX might come to market first, but they'll be close for sure. Uh, Blendinator, $5, drink exclamation point, beer sign. Thank you. Uh, Jim Hurley, $20. It is hard to find info on the new Intel Turbo Boost Max technology 3.0. It spreads across, uh, it spreads threads across favored cores. Wouldn't that have a big impact on caches? Do you know how to test or disable this? Uh, disable like the boosting, I think you should have options in BIOS for that. Impacting caches, I don't know. Um, that is how it works. It, it does have like a, a favored course thing, so that's accurate. The most recent information we put together on it would have been in our, I th think in our 
10900K review. We had some information on how it works, including uh, TVB. And then I think in the Intel news piece, we had information on how it works. But it does spread across favorite cores. So they have a few different turbo boosts. 2.0 is the one that's been around for a while. Um, TVB is a thermal threshold where you get an extra 100 megahertz. It's just, it's on or off. It's not like AMD where it scales the temperature. It's just are you above or below 70C? Yes, no. If yes, then it's 100 megahertz higher, simple enough. And then 3.0 is a, a favored cores approach where the, the best core is boost a little bit higher. So it's Intel's approach to limited core boosting, but um, cherry picking the cores rather than letting it do whatever. So would it impact cash is I don't, I'm not really sure. I, I don't think it's changing the cash ratio, but uh, it's not really something that I've tried testing. So do you know how to test or disable this? You can definitely disable it in BIOS. Paul Fuchillo, $5, no message, thank you. Uh, William Goodman, $2, how do I flatten a new mod mat? I would recommend just when you open it up and unroll it, just flip it over and lay it on its face on the table. And um, then the, the like where it bends from being you know rolled up in a tube and shipping, that'll be flat against the surface. Uh, take some books or something like that, put it at the, the corners and maybe leave it overnight or over a day or something. Um, depending on how long it was in a tube to get to you, it might take a little bit longer, but they typically unroll within a couple days max if you leave it alone. Uh, but it can be faster, just depends how long it was rolled up and shipping. Paul Fuchillo, oh, there's the message. Uh, does SVM being enabled hurt performance when overclocking? I'm actually not sure. That's one of those where the, uh, the I'm not an expert thing really matters because a lot of these settings, it's like I just kind of messed around with it and it worked better. And that's, you know, that's the extent of it. So I'm not sure on that one. That'd be a good question for Buildzoid. Uh, Ken Colby, $2, no message. Blendinator, $5, says drink exclamation point. I think Andrew would probably be really happy if uh, these $5 increments went towards Blender or, or Unreal Engine development. Andrew, if, if you wanted uh, someone to donate to Blender directly or indirectly, would you tell them to buy V-Bucks or would you tell them to donate to Blender? Uh, <laughs> Which one helps them more? Donate directly to Blender. Really? He wouldn't do uh, I don't know if they take V-Bucks. <laughs> they don't take V-Bucks? <laughs> Over at Blender, they don't? Uh, <laughs> Epic Games is a big supporter of Blender, that's why I'm mentioning it. Mike, oh, five dollars. Enjoy the channel, thanks for all the knowledge. Although the more I learn, the more the lighter <laughs> my wallet becomes. Unfortunately, that's a lot of like the hobbies, yeah. <laughs> Smiley time. I mean, the I guess part of the point of money is spending on something you enjoy working with. So hopefully, there's an upside there. Smiley attack, ten dollars. Uh, you guys do a great job. Much support from South Carolina. Love my blueprint shirt. Thanks for picking one up. That's uh, I like that design. Looking forward to the new navy shirts delivery. Here's some money for a couple of gallons for your Lambo. Yeah. Uh, about that and not having one. <laughs> much much like Linus, I don't drive a fancy car. Uh, I can't read this name. It's in a different um, language, <laughs> different character set. But uh, like, I don't know. The, if I were going to read it in English, oh wait, I think I can read it. I think they're actually just using a different character set to spell OG money. <laughs> Five dollars. And it says it looks like Cyrillic or something. Any time frame on a new round of toolkits. Also tell Joe tater tots are better than fries. Did Joe say they're not? I didn't I didn't know that I didn't know Joe's a blasphemer. I'm sorry, I'll I'll double check with him on that. Uh toolkits, yes. Yeah, so they uh were they I think they should be about done with production at this point. I think we're shipping them now. I think they are currently getting handled logistically through a port somewhere. So probably like, uh, let's go with early September maybe. I don't have them on back order because I don't have a, a firm date on it. So I don't put them on back order until I, I really know. Um, but that's going to be my guess right now. Uh, married for now, 2015, 199, thank you. He says, hey boys, the, oh, wait, what? I'm the shirt and mouse pad plus N00DS guy. I know what that 
that spells, but I'm not sure what the reference is to. I'm assuming you're saying you bought a shirt and a mouse pad, so thank you. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm not sure. Vocaloid uh, says, Hey, Steve, any tips on getting my 2x8 Trident Z Royal 3000 and 2x8 T-Force Vulcan 3000 to work? I can't get it to post past 2400 with my 1600 AF and Azrock B450M Pro. Also, Snowflake merch when? I'm uh, not sure. But on the rest of it, so 3000, 2x8. Uh, oh, wait. To work together or to work independently? Can't get it to post past 2400. Man, that's something's wrong if you can't get it to even 3000. Uh, I, I think I would try. Make sure they're in the, the preferred slots for the board. And then I would try probably just setting the B core manually. Maybe you're applying XMP. And if you're applying XMP and then changing the frequency down, but XMP isn't applying the voltage, maybe try applying the voltage manually. Check what's on the sticks. It's almost certainly 1.35. Try that. Uh, see if it boots. If not, then I would go into the advanced memory timings, manually set really loose timings, and then set the higher frequency just to see if it works. That'd be my process. Hopefully that helps. Well, that's uh, that's exactly what I would do. Pop Shepard, uh, I got one of the first run of wireframe mouse pads. It's really nice. Thank you. Well, thanks for getting one of the first runs. That's uh, we had really good feedback on them, and we have a lot more coming in. And like I said, they're on a, they're they should be on a boat now or soon. Uh, so those should be in in August. Uh, Sean Gates. Cheers to all the data nerds everywhere. Jay's just jealous of your charts. Yes, I saw Jay's reference in his review today. That was funny. I, I posted a comment on it. Uh, Jay made the comment. He had like some GN density per chart versus Jay metric, I think, where it was like GN density was like 10,000 or something, and Jay was one. So uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, Leo, 555. Steve, do you have a personal rig? Can we get a tour sometime? Uh, super curious what you run yourself on the daily. <laughs> I, I do. It's garbage. Um, at the office, I use a 6,000 something. I don't even know. It's either a 6,800K or 6,900K, which were good CPUs when they launched. Um, but I don't have it configured in a way that is good. It's got two sticks in it in the office. Uh, I think I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. It is fine for what I do, which is mostly spreadsheets. And then I use the editing computers if I have to preview those. For my computer, I have an FX series processor. It was originally a 9350 or 70 or whatever they were called, the like not quite the highest end one. And um, that, with the board, I had some ASRock 990FX board. I still have it in there. And it sucks. The, the, the VRM is way too hot. So I pulled the CPU and I put it in an 8370, and then I downclocked it and I undervolted it. And now it runs fine. So that's what I have for my system. Uh, GPU, I think it has a 1080 or a 1080 Ti in it. I think it has a 1080 Ti SC2. And the RAM, I think it has 32 gigabytes or something like that. But yeah, the CPU, actually it might be 16. The CPU is bad, though. It's, um, it's really bad. <laughs> FX was not good. <laughs> a lot of people, I think, have come around to that. but. There was a lot of pushback for a while on Voldozer uh, and FX, but it, it has not been great to me. That's uh, So the reason I built it that way is because I wanted a system. I would used Intel for so long at that point, only ever used Intel at the point I built that FX system. So I specifically wanted to build an AMD system to get the experience of using AMD because we're getting more into reviews at that point. Uh, we're starting to, to really get into hardware. So that I wanted that as an experience, not because I actually necessarily wanted the parts. And over time, uh, isn't that 1080 Ti being bottlenecked by the CPU? I mean, yeah, definitely. But if I play games on it, it's probably going to be at a high resolution, so then not really. And also, I have a shelf of 1080 Ti's that aren't being used right now, so I just pulled one of those. But um, yeah, the, the, the experience that I got was terrible. Like I, I had so many problems with that system when it was new. And it's funny how different it is now. I'd probably build an Intel system now because I've been on AMD so long and AMD's kind of in the lead. That I, I just like using a system that's opposite of mainstream just so I know what people are dealing with. Um, any questions about that? I'm still using a 9370FX. Someone says, 
I ran FX until middle of last year. Well, I'm glad to know other people were st stuck on that terrible CPU. Uh, why do you have a, such a low-end personal system? Well, I mean, I don't really use it that much. I'm mostly here, and I, we have everything here. So you know, if, if I really want like some high-end thing, I could, I could build it in 10 minutes in the test room. So uh, that's really the, the bigger reason is that I like to reserve all of the, the good things that we have for testing, for reviews. That's really what we do here. Um, in a business sense, they're worth more there. And then in a content delivery sense, they're worth more there. So I take the stuff that either I don't like anymore for our work systems or my home system, or I take stuff that we have access of, like 1080 Ti's at this point. Uh, Justin Walker, $25, wow. As someone whose first build was a 386SX who never got into OC, it's really awesome to see just how far modern PCs can be pushed. Back in the day, you'd be lucky to push your multiplier past five or 10 megahertz. I never overclocked the old stuff. Um, I don't know if we can get a shot of it, but there is an Intel Pentium Pro up there that was from a viewer, new in box. I'm not gonna open it. We have another one that's open though. But I think you can overclock that one. I, I might pull the open one someday and try it, but I have no idea what I'm doing with those. Uh, Gandhi Hype, $2. People have been losing megahertz with a V-Core set of greater than 1.25. We need to know the actual voltage, not just the number they type in, first of all, but I, I don't know that I, like, I don't know. I don't. People say a lot of things on Reddit, so I don't really know. Um, Evo Cotti Productions, $5. I second the use of Karu RAM tests. That's a good one to know about. It's also $5, but it finds memory errors faster than Memtest Pro. Well, that's good to know. I'll try it out next time. Uh, also, why Cruncher BBB BBP works well for core and IF clock? That is also good to know. Thank you for the information. Uh, so yeah. Try not to send more super chats. I see one just came through. I'm trying to get through the last ones before we close the stream. Uh, I, there's only one page left, though. Evil Cotty Productions also said, also second the use of Optimus blocks. Uh, if you happen to have trouble contacting them, let me know. I can get you a sample quickly, and I'm happy to help. If you, I'm sure I can find it on their website, but if you have whoever would be the right contact for uh, media relations, please send me their email address if you got it, Evil Cotty, and I'll, I'll reach out to them and ask for one. Turtle Stud, 499, hey GN, I have a 3600X and can only manage all core of 4.3 or 1.4. What's the max 24-7 voltage this chip can handle? We went over that earlier. I don't really commit to that number because I don't know. Like, a lot of people have different experiences they report where like this, this person earlier saying people reporting frequency drops at 1.25. I mean, I kind of doubt that's a thing for V core. Uh, 1.25 seems awfully low. But I don't know. Earlier, my, my short version of my answer was I would personally set something like 135, 136 and walk away from it. But I'm not saying that's the 24-7 safe voltage, but that's what I feel fine with. Um, James Thomas, love your channel. Watching with my dad. Uh, my dad will be putting a 3600 on an MSI B550 Tomahawk. What do you think he could OC it to? Can you bench solitaire? Can I bench solitaire? Uh, is it on here? Did they get rid of it in Windows 10? Do they still call it solitaire in here? I think it's gone. Okay, that's nice. I think you have to like separately install it now or something. Otherwise, I, I would actually open it. I don't know what what your bench would be like. How many hands can you be dealt per period of time or something? Uh, well, that's awesome that you're both watching. I, I'm glad that you have the shared hobby. So putting a 3600 and a B550, what do I think you could OC it to? 3600 non-X, non-T. I think uh, typically probably 4.3 is about the high end. You might get really lucky and be able to do 4.4, but 4.3 uh, should probably be achievable. I think that, that'd be where I'd set a realistic goal on it, especially if it's a new 3600. You should be able to do that with a lower voltage than previously. Can't remember exactly what we published in that 3600 new versus old silicon content, but I think it was something to the effect of, uh, I think the voltage we able to get down to like 1.287 or something like that. I don't remember, you can check that content, but we were able to run a, the same frequency at a lower voltage was the extent of the newer silicon. So that would be my target. Uh, Megan, Rachi says, uh, the new shirt is hot. Why no ladies version? 
That is a good question. I've been stocking female versions of a couple of the shirts. Let me check on the inventory of those. And that is one that I didn't make a women's version of because the other ones have been sitting on the shelf for a while. And uh, it is hard to manage more SKUs, but I should definitely get one made. Let me check what we have right now. I try to carry the, the women's versions of shirts to make sure we can represent all the audiences as best we can. So we do have the graph logos on there still in stock. It looks like the, oh sorry, the graph logo is out of stock, but the anniversary one is in stock uh, in a women's black V-neck. So that's in stock, actually pretty good inventory on that. But this one I, I didn't do, so that's a good point. Uh, I will probably get in the next run we do, the next print one, run, I'll get some women's v-necks thrown in. Hopefully that's the one that you want. Uh, I know that there's a couple different versions that we can do, but that's the one we've been doing and people seem to like it. So uh, I'll throw that in for the next print run. Basically the way we do it is when we order shirts, once we run low on them, uh, for I should have done that for this order really, but when we do a new order for a shirt that's been out for a while is when I'll order the, uh, the women's shirt. So if you're trying to like keep an eye out for one that might be out of stock, that's the thing to do is listen for if I say, in a news video that we've just restocked the shirt because I'd probably restock the women's ones then. Because basically, because it's all economies of scale, it costs you know X dollars per shirt if I do 12, 24 of them, which is probably what I'd do for a women's shirt. And then, because they'll sit on the shelf for a while just because the audience you know skew. And then, um, then we'll order the rest of the other shirts and get a discount on all of them. So if I order 12 or 24, it's really expensive. But when I do the next run of these, which shouldn't take too long based on the, on the sales today, then I'll, I'll get a, a women's V-neck ordered in. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, next one is from Car Jesus. A, a competitor has entered the chat. Five dollars. A different field. Got a lucky OG 3600. IO die 1900 megahertz, 4.3, 1.35. Waiting for 4000 series. That is very good. 1900 is very good for an OG 3600. Uh, last couple here, we're almost through all of these and then we'll close out. So, one, two, three, four, I think five or six. Cameron Zukoff, $20. Would you guys be willing to use a Black Desert Online in your gaming benchmarks? I have a 9900K and two Titan RTXs, wow. Connected to four 480 rads, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, inside of a 1000D case and only hit 60 to 80 FPS on 4K. That's a lot of hardware. Four 480s is insane. I think the 1000D is like the only case that would support that without like modifications and stuff. Uh, so would I be willing to use it? We tested it ages and ages ago. It sounds like it would be the best fit for a GPU benchmark based on what you're saying there. So maybe in our GPU suite, if I can figure out a good way to uh, to get like repeatable data in an area that's the problem with MMOs. I don't know if they have any kind of offline like character viewer or something. The problem with MMOs is they're all over the place for performance a lot of the time, uh, just because the variance and players in an area and stuff. But I can look into it for the GP benches. I think. Ganon Rosencrantz says, "Sorry about the FPS question. I was not running ultra settings." Uh, do you think 4700G with 2200 MHz f-clock, 47 nanosecond latency is legit and will be closer to Intel? <coughs> I'm assuming that's a rumor of some kind. Uh, I don't know. I don't pay attention to rumors if it is. 2200 MHz f-clock sounds awfully high, though. Um, Dougal says, just wanted to say hi from Nunavut, Canada. I feel like I've been there. Where is this? No, I have definitely not been anywhere close to that place. <laughs> uh, that would make sense why you're saying hi then. Uh, <laughs> I think I've seen maybe signs while flying in Canada about none of it then. I love your videos, helped me gain confidence to set up custom loop and overclock my CPU and GPU. Well, that's awesome to hear. Uh, I am glad you, you felt the confidence to do it because like I was saying earlier, I think overclocking kind of seems scary because you, you can kill stuff as evidenced by someone else earlier talking about their CPU. But if you, you're careful about it, it should be okay. The, the, the Witchmaster, XTs are just a cash grab, there's a quote from AMD until they release their next gen CPUs. Uh, they would be better off lowering their 3950X prices. I'm donating to you guys so you can get the message out. 
Well, I think we sort of did in our reviews, our three reviews, but uh, I don't know if I'd... I, I do think it's along those lines. I think it's, it's um, uh, attempting to raise ASP. Last two. Jonathan Joachim says, do you get to play video games in your spare time, or is that dedicated to other things? I like to mountain bike, ideally, when I have spare time. Uh, I show some of that in the GM Steve side channel. But games, uh, lately I played a bit of Minecraft Dungeons. I thought that was kind of fun, simple game. Um, I would rank Torchlight maybe higher than it in terms of complexity, but it was pretty fun. I like RTS games a lot. Total War series, Three Kingdoms is fun to me, but I don't get much time to play them. So, I mean, you're talking on the scale of like, like a couple hours a month, typically. Uh, and that's up from previous years. Sean D, last one. GN customer wireframe, oh, custom wireframe human malware face masks when, I guess is the question. The answer is I don't think we're doing those, but uh, it'd probably look cool, but I don't have any plans for that. Okay, that's going to be it. So, uh, yeah, we just did the super chats for the last end of the stream. Thank you to everyone who had questions. Uh, hopefully, I was able to answer some of them. The safe voltage one is like, will this be available to watch later? Yes. Uh, I'll probably set it to unlisted so it can process first. There's one question that just came in. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> what is this? Dyna Muta is doof. I'm guessing it, it, it's German like at the start, and then it's, I don't know if it's German anymore at the end of it. Uh, just saying hi, what about an in-depth <laughs> uh, video about maxing out best bench settings for PBO, including Scalar, uh, EDC, TDC, PBT, MOC, maybe with R20. We did that when it first was a thing, when PBO was new. Uh, we could maybe revisit it, but we have a really in-depth PBO video I'm pretty happy with now. But anyway, yeah, that's it. So we did the Super Chats for a while. If you're jumping to the end of this in the archive, it's, it's all Super Chats for a little while back. But before that, we did the overclocking. So quickly recap again, went over some software that we like using for validating overclocks. Uh, we've gotten some advice in here from people who have other tools that they like using, so I'm going to check those out. But I've been using Memtest Pro, A64, uh, Cinebench R20, TimeSpy for CPU physics validation. And then we went through the order of the overclocks, memory overclocking, all that stuff. So uh, thank you for joining for the stream. It was fun to do some an educational slant on overclocking. And we'll probably get to liquid nitrogen stuff again shortly for maybe the 3900XT to, to go a bit more extreme on it next time. But yeah, the, I'm, I'm very disappointed with the temperatures of this rig. So I'm going to probably try and get an Optimus block, because this thing I feel like should do a lot more cooling. Uh, power than it did here. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more, or you can go to store.cameras.net to help us out directly, and I'll see you all next time.